Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the Town of Avon Advisory Plan Commission meeting. If you are interested in having a copy of the agenda, they are available on the tables to the right of the audience. We will be conducting business as outlined on the agenda. From time to time, the board may deviate from the agenda. As president of this body, I will inform those in attendance of any deviations. This meeting is being recorded for the public record. Because of this, we would request that personal conversations are kept to a minimum, and I would suggest personal conversations should be taken outside the room, and that all cell phones are set to vibrate. Any phone calls should be taken outside the chambers. If you are interested in commenting during the public hearing portion of the commission's deliberations, please sign up on the sheets located on the tables to the right of the audience. When your name is called, please step forward to the podium and state your name and address for the record. Please address your comments to the board and not to staff or to the petitioner. Your comments should relate directly to the case at hand. During the conduct of the public hearing, public hearing portion of the commission's deliberations, the petitioner will have 10 minutes to present their case to the commission. Remonstrators will have 10 minutes total to present objections to the petition. Persons in support of the petition other than the petitioner will have 10 minutes to present 10 minutes total to present support for the petitioner. And finally, the petitioner will close the public hearing portion of the presentation with a five minute rebuttal period. Once the public hearing portion is closed, no additional testimony will be heard unless it is solicited by members of the commission during the question and answer phase of the commission's deliberations. Subdivision plat and development plan petitions are ministerial requests, meaning that if the proposal meets the requirements set forth in the town's development ordinances, the plan commission must approve the request. In the interest of transparency, state law requires that the plan commission hold a public hearing even if the development proposal must be approved. Responses to public comments and questions may be given once the public hearing portion is closed. We understand there may be several pe persons who wish to speak this evening. In order to keep the meeting running in a timely fashion, we would request that you not repeat previous comments. And I think that's going to be especially important this evening, given the attendance we have tonight. Thank you for your assistance in facilitating a respectful, fair, and timely meeting. Again, welcome, and please stand for the pledge. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay. <clears throat> We have a lot of items on our agenda tonight, so we will try and get through them as efficiently as we can. Uh, call to order, Pledge of Allegiance, roll call. Catherine Ransberg. Here. Paul Guckenberger. Here. Bill Reed. Here. Jennifer Spencer. Here. Greg Zusen. Here. Mason Pike. Dave Kaufman. Here. We have a quorum. Moving next to the approval of meeting minutes from February 26, 2024. Has everybody had an opportunity to review the minutes and are there any suggested edits, questions, corrections? One item underneath 6.2, last paragraph, the petitioner's name is Gerard, I believe, and not Garitas. Melissa Gerard. Oh, Gerard, instead of Gutierrez. Yep. Okay. That correction will be noted. Any other um, edits, corrections? Yes. In the area of 6.1, Tyler Oaks, uh, it's misspelled, should be O C H S, I believe, in the last name. What page is that? Under new business, 6.1 Mission Foods. 
Oh, there it is. Okay. Okay. I'm going to ask the treasurer clerk to take the secretary to take note of that. Any other correct? Any other corrections, edits, additions, comments? I make a motion to approve the minutes as amended. Second. All in favor, say aye. 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 Meeting minutes are approved. This is the time at which we are now entering to the public comment section of the meeting. And this is the opportunity for those who are present to speak about things that are not on tonight's agenda. If it's on tonight's agenda, then wait for that, sec that portion of the meeting to come. But if you want to make a comment or speak about something that is not on tonight's agenda, this would be the opportunity to do so. We're going to open public comments at 636. Anybody who wish to step forward and speak on something not on tonight's agenda? not on tonight's agenda. Nobody's speaking forward. The meeting is the public section, public hearing section is closed at 637. Moving on to any requests for continuances or agenda modifications. Yes. Um, we have one petition uh, that was withdrawn, DPR 2313, 1137 Avon Avenue. It was for a gas station, uh, gasoline service station and C-Store. Uh, you saw this come by your desk a lot, and we continued it, continued it, continued it. Uh, the um, rules of procedure say that we cannot continue a petition for longer than six months. They reached their six-month period. Um, when a petition is denied, uh, they cannot reapply for the same petition for 12 months. Um, however, when a petition is withdrawn, uh, they may apply after six months. Did I say 12 months earlier? You said 12 months. Okay. Anyways, uh, they chose to withdraw the petition, um, and I believe they intend to reapply in six months. Um, they're working on site design and, and still working on a traffic study, as far as I'm aware. But that petition has been withdrawn, and that is the only petition uh, for continuances and modifications. Okay. Very good. And that's uh, DPR 2313. That, that's, that's what that was, 2313. Okay, very good. Moving on to old business, ZA 2306. ZA uh, 2306 is for Mission Foods. It's a request for approval of a zoning amendment. Um, this is a request for the forwarding of a favorable recommendation to the town council of a zoning map amendment in which they're seeking to rezone 13.208 acres from R1 to I3. Um, we discussed this uh, last month at the February 26th meeting um, and ultimately the petition was continued uh, to allow for there to be more present members. I believe at the time there was only five uh, members present. They also wanted to get more concrete development details and a more concrete site plan. Uh, you have since been provided a revised site plan. Um, I believe it's on your desk now. It was not included in your packet, I don't believe. Um, and they wanted to obtain clarification of prohibited uses. At the time the staff report was written and the time this uh, presentation was uh, made, we had not heard word about the prohibited uses. I did, however, add about 5 p.m. today uh, was given an email, which is on your desk, um, regarding clarification for uh, those permitted uses. Um, so you can take a look at that. I would uh, advise you, you read through that. Um, the petitioner, uh, they do take issue with certain prohibited uses on that recommend, recommended list by staff. Um, it appears that their concern is that um, their use may classify into one of those prohibited uses. Um, I'm sure that the petitioner will have more to speak on with that. Um, so I'll just move forward and I'll give you a, uh, we'll go through what we went over last week. So here's the revised site plan here. Um, as you can see, uh, they have shown their um, screening requirements here. I will note that uh, the ordinance does require a 30-foot buffer, and drives are not allowed in that. So I don't see that this is 30 feet in width. But we're not approving the development as it is today. That would come during the development plan review process. Um, so just be aware of that. They've also indicated uh, the sections of the building that are being used for what. So um, this crosshatch here 
Uh, to the north would be um, offices, then we would have a warehouse in the rear and uh, manufacturing happening in the center of the building there. This location is located at 95, 97, and 96, 43 East County Road, 100 South, 13.21 acres. Here's the properties in uh, question here. Again, we're, they're looking to rezone it from R1 to I3 to allow for the development of industrial uses related to the existing tortilla manufacturing facility uh, directly to the west of this. The future land use cluster map does not have an overt recommendation for this specific property. Um, however, immediately nearby to the uh, northwest and to the south of the property, it is uh, indicated to be for light industrial uses, which would be consistent with this request here. So here are the uh, future land use designations. We have light industrial recommended here, and we have light industrial recommended here. This is the uh, property in question. Training uses, um, important to this request is that there are residential uses that are directly abutting um, this proposed uh, rezone. Ashford Estates has developed single family residential detached housing to the east. We have Sunchase Woods to the north. Again, to the west, we have uh, the Mission Foods Warehouse, and to the south is a uh, industrial spec building. Um, as I said, it's, uh, there are single family residential uses directly abutting this property. By mechanism of the UDO, a 30-foot landscape buffer is required along each uh, property boundary, which abuts the residential subdivisions. Um, you do have the power at this time to um, impose an increased buffer yard, increased landscaping screening requirements by commitment. Um, so be aware of that. The petitioner has proposed an augmented landscape screening along the eastern boundary, uh, along that subdivision there, in which they are proposing to plant 30-foot tall green giant arbor day um, planted at every eight feet. Here's the original design that was uh, given to us that we saw last month at the meeting here. And I touched on this last month that the uh, information proposed uh, was a bit vague and that you should tread carefully here. Um, and that you should give careful consideration as what's being proposed. Uh, so that we can mitigate any negative aspects associated with industrial developments. Um, for that reason, staff did recommend prohibiting various industri industrial uses that would otherwise be permitted in their requested uh, zoning district. And uh, those are in our staff recommendation here. So staff did recommend uh, the Planning Commission forward a favorable recommendation to the Town Council, um, subject to the following commitments. Um, that these uses be prohibited, automobile services light, automobile services heavy, recycling drop-off facilities, composting facility, mineral extraction, manufacturing, fabricating, and assembly heavy, contractor special trade, heavy contractor yard, heavy vehicle equipment sales and rentals and service, transportation services, rail and air, utility major impact, rail distribution yards, truck freight terminal distribution center, and wholesale trade or storage. And then... Um, we also uh, recommended that a landscape buffer uh, consisting of one 30 foot tall green giant planted every eight feet um, be planted along the Eastern property boundary. That's all I've got for you. Um, do you have any questions for me? Um, just to, if I could have um, Mr. Taylor, this is, uh, this is not a ministerial request that we have here, correct? That's correct. This is a discretionary view. You're making, uh, you're making a recommendation to the town council. You're also not the final word. Uh, you're making a recommendation like on all rezones. Your job is to look at the five statutory factors which the staff has laid out to you um, and uh, make the best recommendation you can to the town council who will then do the same thing. I wait the five factors and make a decision. Thank you for that. So my question is the only thing different from the last time they presented was the email we received today in this new site plan that we've had no chance to even review. Uh, that would be correct. Thank you. 
Can you talk about the the site plan? Um, what is material different than what we saw last month? Uh, in the site plan, uh, they've shown us what the intended uses are for uh, specific sections of the building, and they've also indicated um, that connecting drive to the property to the west. Uh, that was a, a point of interest in the last meeting. Um, so they've actually shown that um, connecting road there. Yep. So no change in location or dimensions of as far as I'm aware, concept. as far as I'm aware, no, uh, I have had limited time to look at this. Also on the email, um, did you have a chance and have time to read the email? I gave it one read through. Again, I, I got it today at, at 5 p.m. Um, so I haven't had ample time to look through it. So I'm going to ask a question I ask on all this. When we get late materials, my concern is that staff doesn't have the time to look at everything to be able to present this adequately to us and what you've just described is you've received materials that came in late that you're not able to present them adequately to us because you haven't had time to review them do you feel like staff needs more time to review what's been submitted here um if you wish to alter the um the prohibited uses i would say that staff would need more time to uh review that but staff remains um steadfast on on our prohibited uses as we've recommended them uh, last month um, but I'm no longer the zoning administrator for the town of Avon right. and a lot of the issues related to the prohibited uses have to do with interpretation of uses um, which is the job of the zoning administrator so I in my position now cannot really speak as to how a specific use might be um, interpreted and classified so um, for that reason, I, I would uh, would not recommend moving forward uh, with an alteration of the prohibited uses. Thank you. Um, I do have a question. Has this particular piece of property ever had any um, other presentations or any other proposals for its use recently, at, not, le at least since the original Mission Foods building was put in? Not that I'm aware of. So this would be the first time this particular plot of land that we've received a proposal as to what to do with this particular plot of land. As far as I know, yes. Um, I could certainly be wrong in that. But um, in my knowledge today, yes, it's the first one. And so we have a piece of land that is sitting between residential and industrial. Yes. Basically. Okay. So maybe a question for council then. If... We would take the position to continue this to allow staff time to review uh, information that came in today from the petitioner. Is that something that we should do now or should we proceed and let the petitioner um, present and hear from public? Well, it's completely up to you. I mean, the advantage of doing a continuous now is that it allows uh, you all to have more information and to digest it and 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 um, analyze it after you've had a chance to review. Uh, some planning commissions go ahead and conduct a public hearing, even though they know they might continue it, so that they can allow the petitioner to be heard, which might clarify or answer some questions. Also allow those who have come out tonight to speak against it, who may not be able to make the next meeting to go ahead and be heard. Okay, thank you. Any further questions for staff? Okay, petitioner may begin. Thank you, uh, Ian. I appreciate your and your staff's, your former staff's work on this. Alex Intermill, attorney for Mission Foods. My associate, Tyler Oaks, was here last month. Uh, Office is at 111 Monument Circle downtown, Suite 2700. Suppose we should deal with the question about the continuances first. Understanding that the commitments are um, really, that that's an important piece of this petition and I think of your consideration we mission foods doesn't have any objection to the commitments that staff has provided what we really are looking for and it sounds like the new admin zoning administrator is the person that we would need to talk with is just to ensure that none of the prohibited uses um, under 
for example, the manufacturing or the um, shipping distribution and so forth would limit or prohibit the activities that Mission Foods does at their current facility. The whole intent of acquiring these properties and the petition that's before you tonight is to allow for an expansion of the existing facility right next door. These properties came up for sale. Mission Foods was able to negotiate the purchase of them and now hopes to sometime in the reasonably near future expand and have an additional facility for offices, some additional manufacturing of tortillas and chips, the exact same stuff they're doing just a few hundred feet to the west. Um, and then some storage and, and warehousing that's related again to the Mission Foods you know, product that they have now. So that was the clarification that we're looking for. Certainly that's gonna be important to your vote. And if it means coming back next month after we've had time to discuss that with the zoning administrator and to allow the commission to review and, and look at that along with the updated site plan, I, I have no objection to that. We requested our contingents last month, so I don't think it's our place to request one this month, but no objection from us if the commission uh, would feel more comfortable allowing those conversations to happen and then come back next month and proceed. We have a lot of people here who want to speak, and I'm assuming some of those people want to speak about this particular agenda item. I think uh, Mr. Taylor's advice is well taken and that we should proceed, okay. understanding that at the end of this, we may still go ahead and continue this out. Does anybody have any, any input on that or thoughts on that? Okay, then let's go ahead and proceed. Okay. Then um, understanding you've got a full agenda and a lot of time, and most of you heard this last month, so I'll move through this. Nothing has changed really other than um, the site plan. And looking at that, and it's not very clear, which button do I push here, Ian? There we go. So here's the conceptual site plan. I think this is the new one. If you look on the eastern boundary there, and that's, of course, the boundary that um, is adjacent to the residential area, which I think is causing most of, of the concern. You can see the line of the trees, which are 30 foot tall, um, green giant arborvitae um, that are, I don't know if they've got, we've got some pictures of those at the end, I believe, significant evergreen um, that will block light, sound, the sight lines for it. That together with the um, buffer yard, which Mission Foods is 100%, of course, they're going to comply for that with that and not look for any sort of variance. It may not be clear on the conceptual plan that you have before you, but that is certainly something that I've discussed with Mission Foods and they, are, uh, they have no issue with providing that buffer yard to make sure that uh, we're being good neighbors to, to the folks to the east. Um, I explained the why, you know, they want this, the, the growth of the existing Mission Foods facility to the west. It'll be a complement, allow them to expand as that um, facility grows and demand grows. It's been really successful what they've done there. If they, you know, when they expand, I'm not sure if any of you or all of you are familiar with the building that exists, the way that they create that, it's actually a, a plant within the building. And so there's the structure that you can see on the outside, and then they actually construct an, the, the manufacturing facility inside of that. So it's a manufacturing facility that's contained within the actual building. And that goes to keeping dust, noise, light, all of those things really down. So it's a low impact use um, in, in that facility just be it by the nature of the way that it's designed and every intent of mission foods is to construct uh you know this sister facility in the same way that they have with their existing facility now so we think that with the buffer the screening um, and just the nature of the way that they build their facilities that they uh, will not have a negative impact on the value of the neighbors nor on their quality of life that will separate that um, and also one of the considerations, it's not just the neighbors to the east, but it's the value of all of the property in the area. And we think we'll actually increase that as the contemplated growth is for light industrial. 
Um, for the commitments, again, I touched on that. We don't have any issue with the commitments, except we just want to make sure and have clarification that Mission Foods would be able to do the same things that they're doing at their existing facilities. Make tortillas, make tortilla chips, bring in the supplies, the raw materials that they need, the flour, salt, et cetera, to make those and then package them and ship them out. So, so long as none of the committed prohibited uses limit or prohibit that type of use that's currently going on just next door, Mission doesn't have any issue with that. But again, I think that's something that maybe we need to clarify with the zoning administrator and have further discussion about. Um, with that, I may be getting close to 10 minutes. I don't want to belabor it. It's in 18 seconds. I think you've heard it before. You heard it last month. You've seen the plans. Um, I welcome any questions you have. Again, I think that it fits within your plan. I think that with the buffering, the screening and so forth, it takes care of the concerns of the folks to the, the east. Um, and again, I think it would be a great thing for the community. We'd appreciate your favorable recommendation. You showed a picture of the pine trees. Yeah. There you How go. How long does it take to get that tall? Um, they're going to plant pretty full size. They grow fast. Um, and so they're, I mean, by the standards, they have to have minimum, was it eight feet, Aaron, eight, Ian? Um, I think when they come, they're even bigger than that, but they grow pretty quickly. And so the intent is to make sure that, you know, we've got a significant screening from the from the start. Um, they're not going to be 30 feet when they get planted, but we're not going to plant miniature trees out there that take 30 years to get to 30 feet. Um, again, Mission wants to be a good neighbor. Any further questions for the petitioner? Okay, if you'd like to have a seat while we take public comment, that'd be great. We're not going to start public comment. Um, again, the total amount of time is 10 minutes. If you hear someone say something that you were going to hear, we would ask that you refrain so that we don't have one person or so that we don't have multiple um, repetition of the same comment when other comments need to be heard. And we are going to limit individual comments to two minutes in order to allow as many people to be heard as possible. Uh, we will give some discretion on that. So let's go ahead and start. The first person signed up to speak is Rhonda Koch. And please remember to give your name and your address. My name is, excuse my cold. My name is Rhonda Koch, and my address is 1177 Waterford Drive, Avon. So again, I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, my husband and I built our forever home here 30 years ago. We live in a very small neighborhood of approximately 30 homes just east of the property of the issue. Um, many changes have happened in the years in which we've lived here that we are in favor of growth to the positive of our community. Um, we built our haven to raise our children and spend the rest of our lives here. Um, but recent years, development of uh, Ronald Reagan Parkway and the widening of 200 South and 100 South have um, ad added huge noise uh, issues and safety concerns to our neighborhood. Again, being able to get in and out of our small neighborhood. In addition, there are um, constant warehouse issues that include these go on all times of the day and night. There are whining noises that go on for hours. Um, again, during the construction of the warehouses and whatever it is they're storing or building, um, our homes have been covered with dirt and dust 
and at certain part points, we couldn't sit outside in our backyards or be able to be in our backyard. Um, and then, as everybody knows, as of March of 2022, there Hi. was the... You've reached two minutes. Oh, sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Thank you for speaking. All right, thank you. The next speaker is Tina Northern. My name is Tina Northern, 6588 Lake Forest Drive. I was told I needed to speak tonight. Uh, last month, one of the prohibited uses was explosives. It's not on the list this month. So I don't know if what I have to say is still relevant. Explosives, usually we think of things we use to cause an explosion, TNT, C4, but there are a lot of solid dust that can be explosive. We have wood dust, coal dust, carbohydrate dust. Flour is a carbohydrate. If you try to burn a lump of flour, you, uh, or try to light it, you probably won't get an explosion. It may burn. There's limited surface area for the oxygen in the air to react with it. If you can get that flour separated into either up in the air or maybe even in a, a large coating, you can get an explosion if you have heat. And there was an explosion in a bakery in Savannah, Georgia in 2021. It was a minor explosion. Two employees were hurt. But other things like sugar, there was a sugar explosion, I think in 2008 near Savannah, Georgia, massive explosion, 14 people killed, building demolished. So if explosives are still a forbidden thing to use to use in that area, then you might want to think about the flower. Thank you. Thank you. Next. That is all that we have signed up to speak on Mission Foods. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this particular agenda item who did not sign up already? Sir, go ahead and step forward and state your name and address. I'm Tim Forrest. I live at 1096 Foxford Drive. Uh, the only thing that I'm worried about is the, is the hazmat. I mean, I'm going to have hazmat in my backyard, but nobody can give me, and an, uh, I was told to get in touch with a guy named Levi with a, as a fire marshal. I don't know who he is, but that's who I was told to get a hold of by some here today. Never called me back because I want to know what the easement is from from hazmat to a residential area and nobody can seem to give me an answer on it there's got there's got to be an ordinance to where it says how many how many yards you have to be to to a flammable or hazmat and that's what this stuff is and i mean flowers very very flammable i mean i drove a truck for 30 years and i mean it's i mean it's very flammable but the other thing is that driveway behind that building. That that driveway is going to be right in my backyard. And I'll tell you what, I drove a truck and, and them semis are going to go right behind that building and sit there for hours with their tractors running and the noise is going to be unbearable. And if you if you move that building to the west and take that take that easement away from Mission Foods over there and make that all one drive over there, then you can move that building that away. Because the farther away it gets to my house, the better off I'll feel. Because, I mean, you have an explosion, it'll take our addition. It'll take everything to Ronald Reagan. You have an explosion like that. Because when he said it was manufacturing, I knew right then that it was going to be flammable because there's flour going to be in there and hard to tell them what other products that, that we don't know about that, that are hazmat. So... That's all I got to say, but I mean, I just wish, are, are they, are they asking for uh, a road a, to an entrance off of Moore Street into this business? Well, I can't answer that question, but you timed it perfectly because you just reached your two minutes. Well, so I, mean, I just don't know because according to the, according to what they just showed up there, that there's going to be an entrance off there. And there is no way that that easement in the center of that road is enough to get a semi off there. Okay. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this matter, on this agenda item? Okay, would the petitioner like to provide rebuttal? Sure. 
Thank you. Um, so yeah, they make tortillas. They've got flour, they've got salt. I'm sure there will be oil to, to cook things in. It, it's food, um, but it's also done very safely. I mean, Mission Foods and their parent company, they do this all over the world with an you know, incredibly uh, safe record. And they build things in a way to make sure that they aren't having these types of issues. Is flour combustible? Of course it is. But so are fertilizers, anhydrous ammonia, and other things that go on that property now is for ag. Um, so, you know, if we're able to rezone the property when it comes time for the site development plan and the approval, we'll address all of those. And I'm sure that staff will see and that the, the town will see that the way that Mission Foods builds their facilities, it's state of the art and it'll be safe. Um, with respect to dust and noise and those types of things, again, we've got the screening and the buffering. Sure, when there's construction going on, turning uh, uh, you know, ag land into a new facility, there's gonna be dust, there's gonna be noise. But once that's done, it's paved, it's green, the dust goes away, I would argue less dust than they get in the spring when they're tilling and in the fall when they're bringing crops in. Um, the Morris Street entrance, I'm not quite sure which street is Morris Street. Um, it's 100 South. Oh, it's 100 South, okay. So yeah, I mean, we've got a proposed entrance there. But again, that's site development as Ian me mentioned. You know, that's, that's down the way and we'll meet with staff and look at the development standards and deal with that and traffic studies and all of the parts of that process when we're ready for that. Um, as we've got it depicted, it's a concept. We think we would like to have some entrance in and off of 100 or Morris Street. How wide, where that is located, I mean, that's a detail for down the road. I think now it's the, the proposed use in the rezone, uh, which fits perfectly. It's the same user, same owner as the, the next door neighbor, Mission Foods. Um, I think that about covers it unless uh, the commission has any questions for me. The only question I have is, have you considered it moving it further west away from their property line? Yeah, I, I think the mission is open to that. We have had those discussions. Again, that's down the road for the, the, cons or the actual site plan, the development plan process to see, you know, how far we can move things, where utilities line up, access on 100 and, and those types of details. So yeah, Mission is open to increasing that buffer uh, and that distance um, in addition to the screening that we have provided there. And you just mentioned that. So I was going to ask you, is like widening the buffer. So it's 30 feet now, but making that wider um, and making the buffer more than what it is. And so we'd see something that, again, like the gentleman was talking about, being able to buffer parking lot from his land and I don't know if there's room to put the trees around the detention pond in the back there as something like that for you to be looking at. Um, we would certainly consider it. I think to the south, I guess it would be, yeah, the south, that's light industrial as well. Um, I'm talking about the eastern border. The, the, the eastern pond. border, I mean, sir, I mean that's, that's the that's the sticking point, right, next to the residential. And right. again, Mission Foods wants to be a good neighbor and is open to exploring you know, additional buffer uh, yard distance, but of course, to the extent that they can do it and still build the facility that's gonna meet their needs. They don't wanna restrict their ability, you know, have 25% you know, of their property be taken up with the buffer yard, so then they aren't able to actually utilize the property the way that they would like to. But things like the screening, and um, I believe they got a fence that's depicted in there as well, and that's to, you know, again, keep things from from coming from their property over. But I think if you if the neighbors look at the existing facility, it, it, it's it's nice, it's clean. Uh, I, I get it that when construction was going on, it's it's noisy and dirty, and that's no one likes that. But now that it's in, um, you know, it's a good neighbor. I think a lot of these folks got notice when I was having this presentation during COVID times over Zoom for the original facility for, for Plainfield. And we talked about some of these things and, and Mission made good on those issues. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> 
So, comments? Oh, well, now it's time for our discussion. Like make so. I, I would propose that we continue this. I would like staff to spend more time on what the petitioners and their responses to the uh, commitments on what would not be on this property. Because again, we're looking at if it's rezoned, if it's rezoned, that there's a commitment for the property that could outlive the, the current petitioner. So I think we need to make sure that time is spent especially with the change in staff, that they look at this and determine, are these the right commitments or not? I think it would also, uh, since we had these points raised, if we could get some clarification with regards to explosives being on uh, prohi uh, prohibited use and also the question about the um, easement for hazmat materials that the gentleman um, was asking about, and we can include that. Um, I. I agree. I, I don't like getting things at the last minute, which is we got this email at the last minute. And, um, you know, we're in the, med in the middle of changing staff. And thank you for assisting us here tonight, Ian. Um, we appreciate that. And we appreciate, we've always appreciated your staff reports. So um, I think I agree. I agree with you, Paul, that we should probably continue this any anybody else have any feelings on that i just ask when they come back that they get us the information prior to the distribution to the <laughs> members here because that's the biggest problem is we're not getting it in a timely manner and but i would also ask that you also have responses to the the neighbors that spoke tonight a couple of them spoke the last time from the minutes but again to remind as you indicated your existing building is located in Plainfield. And I believe the existing neighborhood to the east is in the unincorporated area. So that's a county jurisdiction. So I hope you people have talked to the county and talked to Plainfield as well about the existing property and your properties. I'd agree on the timeliness. Most of the things that were brought up in this letter were mentioned by the petitioner last meeting. Mm -hmm. um, and so I would have thought they should have been able to provide something sooner than five o'clock today. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I, I believe the email we had. Received. If you could step to the podium, please. Just to clarify that we, I think the, the questions on the commitments were that email was sent earlier to staff than five o'clock today. But with the change in Ian and I think Laura is taking over, we had our site development updated plan in on Friday around noon or 11 sometime in the morning. So um, we understand you need to have time to look at it, but the issue with the commitments and trying to raise these things, I mean, that those conversations were happening um, you know, earlier. I think Tyler re-forwarded this to saying, hey, we still would like to try to talk through some of these before tonight's meeting. But point taken, we'll have these, con if you continue it, we'll have these conversations with the new staff and zoning administrator and address these questions and come back in if, April. Yeah, if we can get it sooner than the Friday before the meeting, that would be great. Sure. So uh, do I, any more, com any more discussion or do we want to entertain a motion? I'm going to make that motion that we uh, continue uh, ZA 23-06 mission approves to get one second 2024 mission. Do I have a second? Second. Let's take a vote. Catherine Ransberg. Four. Paul Guggenberger. Four. Bill Reed. Four. Jennifer Spencer. Four. Greg Zuzan. Four. Dave Kaufman. Very good. That meeting is continued to the, or this uh, agenda item is continued to the April meeting of the plan commission. <clears throat> Moving on to the next agenda item, which is uh, the Canic Derringer rezone. All right, ZA 2401, Pulte, Canock Derringer, is a request for approval of a zoning amendment. 
for the favoriting of a favorable recommend forwarding of a favorable recommendation to the town council uh, to rezone 23.1 acres from Hendricks County zoning RB single family residential to the town of Avon's R2 mixed residential zoning. There's no significant land use history associated with the subject properties. There is a super voluntary annexation petition uh, on file, I believe. I'm not sure where it is in the process at this moment, um, but there is one on file. Uh, the petition was continued at last month's plan commission meeting on February 26 to allow for more present members. I believe by the time this one was heard, uh, we only had four uh, commission members present. Um, to allow the petitioner more time to work with the surrounding property owners and to allow revised notice to be sent. I believe there was one address where a single digit was left off of that notice. Um, so as I understand it, that was resent. The property is 6590 East County Road, 100 South. It's 23.1 acres. Um, here's the property in question here, outlined in red. It's actually uh, two parcels at this moment. Again, they're looking to rezone uh, from Hendricks County RB to Town of Avon's R2. They're looking to develop a 39 lot single family subdivision uh, utilizing the enhanced architectural and lot standards. Uh, this would result in a density of 1.86 units per acre, uh, which is significantly less than the maximum density of 3.0 units per acre allowed by the R2 zoning district or, and the 4.0 unit, units per acre allowed by R2's enhanced lot standards. Um, staff has found that the town of Avon's R2 mixed residential zoning district is the closest equivalent zoning district to Hendricks County's RB. Um, they have equivalent lot sizes of 12,500 uh, when they're not us utilizing the enhanced standards. Um, however, they are seeking to do that here. Do you wanna close it, I think? Uh, here's a concept plan um, for you to view. Again, we've looked over this and gone over it uh, quite a bit last month, um, so I'll keep it moving here. The 2017 future land use cluster map doesn't have any overt recommendation for the property. When this happens, uh, we typically assume that the underlying zoning represents the long-term land use recommendation or we extend a nearby land use recommendation. Uh, in this case, there is no nearby land use recommendations in the area. Um, so we therefore assume that the underlying zoning is the recommended land use. This is a snippet from our future land use cluster map here. Um, as you can see, there is nothing in the area. The closest thing would be specialty housing. But again, this is in a completely different area and staff would not find that to apply to this property. Ultimately, uh, staff recommends a favorable recommendation to the town council for ZA 2401 Pulte Canock Derringer. Subject to the following commitments that a 60 foot half right of way be dedicated along the entirety of the subject property. Um, and that the petitioner shall make arrangements for required offsite road improvements by either A, paying an infrastructure contribution in lieu of the road improvements in the amount of the reasonably estimated costs to acquire the right of way and construct improvements. Uh, the amount of the infrastructure contribution will be agreed to by the developer and the town prior to final plan approval or be follow the procedures set forth in section 7.21 f of the avon udo including provisions set forth in section 7.21 f2 uh, and number three a recreation impact fee shall be assessed for the amount as adopted by ordinance at the time of application for building permits uh, the language on that last one has changed since last meeting just to be more specific in what we're requesting I had a specific uh, dollar amount at the last meeting, um, but this updates, I believe, every year. Um, so we didn't want that dollar amount to stick in perpetuity. We wanted it to be accurate to at the time that they apply for their building permits. So that's all I got for you. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm available. That was my question. Questions for staff? Okay, petitioner can step forward. Oh, thank you.
And you have 10 minutes. Am I on there? Um, good evening, members of the Plan Commission. My name is Melissa Gerard. I'm the Entitlements Manager at Pulte Homes. Um, I will first state by saying that <clears throat> nothing has changed about this petition uh, from what you have seen uh, last month. I wasn't actually even going to go into any detail, but then I got to thinking there are a few people here who might have had to leave early or weren't here last month, and I know you're in transition with staff, so I'll just try and breeze through it very quickly. <clears throat> Whoops. So this shows the property. Um, uh, it's uh, west of the Hickory Mill Elementary School and the Hickory Mill um, subdivision and east of the water park, um, north of 100 South. It's uh, contiguous to the water park there on the west. Um, I would note that there is a strip of non-contiguity between it and Hickory Mill. We are not seeking to annex that or zone it or develop it or anything. It will remain there um, as long as the landowners choose to have it there. It is not part of our project. Um, also, um, you will note that um, the project goes all the way down to 100 South, basically in two fingers, um, but uh, that's just for purposes of annexation and the zoning. Um, we will not actually be plotting uh, the Derringer house. That will remain separate. They're going to keep that. So um, this is the same picture from the comp plan that Ian showed, only his picture was better than mine. Um, this is the subdivision plat. Um, one thing I would note also, um, going back here, um, this property has been zoned for residential development with the county since at least 1992. We didn't go back any further than that when we were searching um, the county records, but it has been zoned RB since at least 1992 with the county. Um, so it's not just an ag piece that's being converted for residential use. It's actually always been intended for residential use. Um, so this is the um, site plan. As uh, staff noted, we are uh, going to be complying with the enhanced architectural standards in section 7.27 of your UDO. Um, we have a density of 1.86. I would note that um, Hickory Mill to the east is a density of 1.94, and they don't comply with the same architectural standards that we will be complying with in this subdivision. Um, to the north, we have um, the four lots on the northern perimeter. Um, we have tried to make those all 12,500 square foot minimums to match the um, current RB zoning, what would be allowed um, in the county. So um, those lots are a little bit bigger. I would note that a majority, well, or a large percentage of these lots anyway, um, will need to be walkout basements by virtue of the topography. Um, so there definitely will be walkout basement opportunities for these homes, which will dramatically increase the, the cost and the assessed valuation as well. Um, these are um, some of the elevations that we will be employing in the subdivision. I would note um, there will be no vinyl. So um, it will all be some fiber cement heart, uh, uh, hardy plank siding and then masonry materials. Um, I, I had reported last month that I had held a neighbor's meeting and I met with a number of the neighbors. And then subsequent to that, I went out and met with a few more neighbors individually at their homes to talk about um, landscaping and things like that. Um, Mr. Bernie, the one that has the arrow to the um, uh, that says 309 or something on the on the right side. I think we've worked things out with him. Um, I've offered to the two in the middle um, uh, the county's type one buffer, which is the buffer that the county would suggest. Uh, Avon doesn't require a, a, a buffer between um, like uses, uh, residential uses, um, but the county would have a type one buffer between an RB and an RC. We're not really an RC but I've offered the buffer materials anyway, um, the vegetative materials. Uh, one thing I need to note, I'll go back to the site plan here real quick. Uh, one interesting feature of this challenge of this development is the entire northern section of the property is covered by a 40 foot um, WCCD sanitary easement. So we can't plant anything in that easement. Um, the property is pretty densely wooded already, but um, we can't do anything in the WCCD easement. Um, 
the, the sanitary sewer is currently up there, but as part of the project, um, we will be bringing the sanitary sewer south through our development down to 100 south. Um, and then the final um, northern neighbor there, um, that says 244.9, uh, that's Mrs. Northern who spoke on the previous project in the, in this, uh, in the Mission Foods one. Um, the, the, between her house and her property line is 244 feet. Um, you add another 40 feet for our WCCTC um, easement and there's almost a whole football field between her and um, uh, the closest house in our subdivision. Um, in addition, I would note that it's really densely wooded and a huge steep cliff drop off over there. The topography back there is very um, steep. Um, this, isn't, this is from our presentation last week. This is no longer relevant. Um, we've met, we agree with staff. Um, I, I realized Ian's error on the park impact fees last month, but we would have never held him to that anyway. Um, so we are perfectly agreeable to all the conditions he um, uh, suggests. I would note, so the property kind of down there where you see the Pulte Group emblem is owned by uh, the Smith family. Um, I have met with them on site subsequent to our last meeting, and I think I've reached accommodations with them. Um, then I also got a call from Mr. Sprague, who was the last um, speaker last month, um, and he asked questions about the sanitary. Um, he told me, he informed me that he had gotten a petition together of like 10 property owners along uh, 100 South who had failing septic systems and asked WCCD to bring those sewers down from the north and WCCD told them that they couldn't afford to do that. So we will be doing that and bringing them from the northern part to the southern part as part of our development. Um, the Smiths reiterated that to me. They have a rental property which they own along 100 South that is also in need of um, sanitary sewers. So I think that um, that is all I have for you tonight, unless you have any further questions for me. Ah, I'm trying to get. Um, I've addressed the notice issue. We fixed that. As Ian noted, we provided evidence to staff. Um, and I've met with the only two additional neighbors who contacted me subsequent to um, the meeting last month. Um, uh, I've, I've held public meetings and, I mean, neighbor meetings and met with everybody and made several site trips out to Avon to meet with anyone. So. Um, if anyone has any additional comments, I'm happy to address them. Otherwise, I guess I'd ask for a favorable recommendation from you tonight and reserve the remainder of my time for um, rebuttal. I do have a, a couple questions. Mm -hmm. The green space, so basically the, the trees there on the western side of the property, is that okay. considered common area? It will be common area. It won't, for the most part, it, it won't be landscaped common area. We'll leave it wooded. Um, uh, the part down um, along 100 South will be landscaped um, and between the Derringer property that you can see here, the part of the property that the Derringers are re retaining down there, it's kind of grayed out in that picture. Um, we, and we'll landscape between um, a few of those lots uh, and the property line um, on the West, but it, we can't go very far before the the grade really drops off there, but there will be some landscaping. I've promised the Smiths I would, those will be where our models will be anyway. So that will be where our prettiest landscaping is. Okay, thank you. Mm -hmm. Approximately how many, you, you, and this was brought up the last time that um, you will bring, be bringing sewer down to 100 South, which is currently not available to those neighbors. Approximately how many of those neighbors, and you may not know, do you anticipate would be would then have access to WCCC um, Well, we sewers? will, WCCD will probably make us run it along the length of our property frontage. Um, so we will do that. Um, and they'll make us put a manhole probably on the property line um, that you know anybody can access from there. Um, so it will be a dramatic savings over the cost of bringing it down from the north because um, we'll be doing that as part of our development. Okay. Can we connect? 
Yes, Mr. Taylor. <clears throat> yes, Mr. Art, just for clarity, um, in the staff report, it mentions this 1.86 uh, density. You mentioned it. Are you making a commitment to that, or is that just an analysis uh, of the site? That's where we are right now. Um, I, I don't think, because of the topography of the site, that I'm going to be able to um, fit any more houses in it. Um, originally, we had three more. When we first filed this, it was 42 lots. We lost lots there where you can see the green space running north-south um, along the western edge. Those were lots we lost due to topography. I'd like to preserve the ability to make one or two of them up. But even, even when I had all three of them, it was only a 2.01 density for this sub subdivision. So Pulte's not making a commitment about density at any level a as part of this? It, it would be, I think, almost impossible for us to exceed 2.0 acres. I think I'm going to be at 1.86. I'd like to maybe be able to add a lot if I can here here and there, but I, I honestly, frankly, don't even think it's going to happen. I just think since it's mentioned in the staff report and by the petitioner, we should just understand that that's not a commitment. Um, that seems to be a material part of the of both presentations, and yet nothing that would be binding on the petitioner unless the petitioner makes a, a formal commitment to a particular density limitation. And so <clears throat> I just want to remind the the commission, I know you have experience in this level, but that's a concern to me. I couldn't tell whether a commitment was being made or not. So I thought I'd just clarify. Thank you, Mr. Taylor. Can I follow up on that then? Because <clears throat> if the number of lots exceeds, is it 40 or 41, then does that not require two entrances? Let me find the exact number here. Yeah. I'm pretty sure it's either 40 or 41 that our ordinance, because we've had this discussion. Would require today. a second access. Yes. We didn't have that comment at our TAC meeting, but if that's what the ordinance is, we have no intention of going over that limit that would require a second entrance. So I will commit that we will not exceed that limit. So yeah, they, they wouldn't be able to without your approval. Right. I mean, you'd have to come for a waiver yes. anyway. But that's, I mean, I think that goes with, uh, we're not getting a commitment on density, but there would be an impact on any, trying to squeeze more lots in. So for your, for your awareness. I, I really honestly can't see how we can, put any more than the number that we had originally filed in here. And we've taken, we don't voluntarily usually remove lots from our plans um, prior to <clears throat> zoning. Um, but in this case, they just weren't feasible. Um, the lots would not have been buildable. Okay. Any further questions for the petitioner? Okay, if you'd like to have a seat, we will now take uh, comments uh, from the public. Uh, before we do that, uh, please note that you have received a letter on your desk regarding this um, proposal, and you also have uh, what appears to be two uh, presentations um, that I assume the speaker will refer to. I would remind everybody the total amount of time for public comment is 10 minutes. Each person is limited to two minutes because we have so many people here. And I'm assuming a lot of you are here. If you hear comments being made that are similar to your zone, I would ask you to refrain from repeating those comments. And getting myself set up here. Who is our first petitioner? Our, our, first, our speaker first speaker is speaker. Tina Northern. Tina Northern, 6588 Lake Forest Drive. A comment. If you notice the picture, I think I can see farther than th she thinks I can see. My house is up here 
I can see stuff way over here. I can see people walking sometimes in Murphy Park. I can see traffic in Murphy Park. You can see a long ways when the leaves are off the trees. Uh, to me, I oppose the rezoning to R2. I thought that the zoning had to be consistent with the surrounding properties. All the surrounding properties, except for Murphy Park, are either single house residential or undeveloped land. I agree with many of the concerns of my neighbors. I would also like to talk about something a bit different. Since no animals were available to come tonight and speak, I want to speak on behalf of the animals. I think basically a development would be bad for the animals. For many years, the animals have had free use of wild spaces at the back of our lots and the back of two lots from 625. Murphy Aquatic Park took away part of that space. This development would take away more. I know many people count animals as worth nothing, but they were here first. A housing, um, the results, if they have less space to forage, about homes, nests, rest and play, could possibly lead to conflicts between animals and people in the housing development. When I moved in my place, I was moved into a wild place. I was expecting to find animals. These people are moving into housing development. It's all nice and neat. You don't expect to find animals. So if they wake up, if they hear a noise at night on the back stoop, look out and see a raccoon eating the dog food, are they going to call animal control? Will animal control take the raccoon away and leave four baby raccoons to die? What are the people going to do if a coyote or a fox walks through the neighborhood or eyes their dog? I don't think a lot of these people are expecting to inter interact with animals. The interaction will probably be negative for at least the animals and possibly also for the humans. Uh, You've reached two minutes. Okay, fine. <laughs> Running a tight ship here. <laughs> okay, next on our, uh, on our the, speakers list. The next speaker is Trilby Taman. Quick, quick, Who quick. Is ready to go. I I'm ready. See. I'm ready. Go ahead. She'll be Barry Taman, 6570 Lake Forest Drive, north side of the property. I did give you some exhibits for you to peruse to understand that, not, meanwhile, R2 is what is listed as the most similar in most cases for a 12,500 plot. Or just take note of the terrain and the character that this property has to the north of it, to the southwest of it. And in order to continue and be consistent as has been stated with the town, this character of this property is unique. A third of it can't even have houses on it because of the terrain. The idea that you put together and that I hear Pulte say that they're going to cram as many houses on that property that they physically can is not consistent with the character of the land that we're looking at. I do believe it's closer to an R1, and I would hope that the council would consider that, that it's true. I, I do believe it needs to be developed, and I'd rather it be developed with houses, but I would prefer it be consistent. I prefer it give... Uh, us folks to the north, of course, but the land around it to Murphy Park, um, the same feel as what is already existing. Um, I do live in the township. I don't live in the town, you know, so I don't know what kind of weight it carries for me to say this to you. I know it's a super voluntary uh, annexation. The county, as I speak to them, they say, leave it to the town because you're so close. Um, but I'm pretty sure that the county didn't want to have anything to do with it either. I think it's a tight plot. I think they're going to run into it. And I beg you, if this goes through, that you keep track of the zoning, that you keep track of the plots. One thing that I'll make note that while uh, Pulte says that they can put those four plots on the black back as RB as it is today, it might be 12.5, but the front edge doesn't meet. you got to have at least 60 foot. Thank you. Or two minutes. Okay, thank you. Next. Next, we have Carol Battistini. And if I could just say, this is the, this is what you presented. To, okay, thank you. Hello, Carol Battistini, six five seven six Lake Forest Drive. I'm also on the north side of the uh, parcel of uh, Canix. Uh, thank you for the time. I continue to be opposed to the density of the Canix Derringer development that will require destruction of a significant portion of the long-established forest on the Canuck property and change the character of its current neighbor's property. 
what on their plat or their concept, you see the green space and it looks wonderful that they've kept that and we're happy about that. But if you see there's an additional little squirrely line that I understand is where our current forest line goes or as not ours, Canex property and Derringer's. So all of that forest is gonna be taken out. In additional, uh, where the uh, homes are that will have the build out, uh, walk out basements, there'll be a lot of trees, uh, forests destroyed in, in that as well. Referring to the staff comments found in the packet PDF uh, that was posted on avonindiana.gov. One reason for the continuance from February was to allow more time to work with adjoining property owners. I requested to Poldy to explore with my husband and I an option that would satisfy us to withdraw our objection. But the response we received was a no uh, with an offer of vegetative materials that we could plant on our property as a buffer. This information is documents that I have provided to you, the packet that has the lovely pictures, which I'm sure you're happy to get, <laughs> that will give you a sense of what the property looks like. There's multiple pictures along the property line that adjoins the Kennec property in that packet. I believe the pictures will make it clear to you that the offer of vegetative materials, which that listing is also in the packet, for us to plan as a buffer is impractical and underwhelming. It will do nothing for us. One thing, it's a forest, it's a canopy. There's no sun. You can't add shrubs and expect them to, to prosper. Uh, thank you for up. your time. Thank <laughs> that you. was close. perfect timing. <laughs> perfect timing. Okay, next. Uh, that is all we have signed up to speak on this case. Is there anybody else who would like to speak on this particular agenda item who has not already signed up to do so? Okay, very good. Uh, the uh, petitioner would like to, you have, because you reserved two, you have seven minutes for rebuttal. I won't take it all, I promise. Um, so, um, <clears throat> Mrs. Northern um, mentioned the animals, and all I can really say to that is that this property has been zoned for residential use for a long time, for um, over 30 years. Um, so there's always, and, and those zoning decisions were made with some notion that there might be some conflict with the animals. But I will say we're doing our, our very, very, very best to maintain a lot of the natural wooded uh, areas on this site. Um, everything on the, the west side, pretty much. Um, the Smiths also have a huge portion of the wooded area on their property. So there will still be plenty of um, habitat for the animals um, on this property uh, because was a large portion of it's gonna remain natural. We're not going to landscape it. We're not going to strip it. Um, we're, we're not going to do anything to it. It's going to remain as it is. Um, as to um, Mrs. Barry Taman's um, comment that the character is unique, we're hoping that we're going to um, pro maintain as much of that uniqueness as possible. That's part of what attracts us to this property and why we think people will want to live here um, is that we're gonna maintain a large portion of the woods. We're gonna maintain some of the topography. Um, it's it's gonna be a very attractive subdivision uh, or community, I think. Um, the idea that we're trying to pack in as many lots as we possibly can is not accurate, actually. Um, I'm making um, representations that I'm trying to make those lots, um, and right now I'm showing them as 12,500 feet um, on the northern perimeter, but that comes at a risk of actually losing one of those lots um, because I'm just barely making it right now. And as this comes to engineering, I may, I may lose lots by offering to do the right thing with the neighbors. Um, so, um, and in terms of Mrs. Battistini, um, we had had several um, dialogue, uh, a continued dialogue before the last meeting. I haven't really heard anything from them since I made the last offer to them, since I visited their home. Um, I did offer her at one point orally um, a fence along the property line, um, which would be uh, obviously more opaque than um, the deciduous trees, but she didn't seem to want the, the fence. Um, 
So all I can do is offer them vegetative materials on a property that is really, really, really wooded already. Um, we're doing our best um, to by the neighbors by trying to make those northern lots um, kind of mimic their lots. I've I've had a lot of meetings with a lot of people out here. Um, I've tried. I've I've satisfied a good number of them. Um, there's a couple I haven't been able to satisfy, um, but. Um, I will commit to continuing to work with them and seeing what we can we can come up with between now and, and the plotting. Um, I, Pulte never walks away um, just because we're done with zoning. Um, I will continue to see what I can do. If, if Mrs. Battistini wants a fence, I'm happy to, to do that. Um, the, um, so I, I think most of the other comments I addressed last month, but if you have any further questions, I'm happy to address them, but we would respectfully request your um, uh, favorable recommendations to the town council. We think that this is gonna be a quality subdivision in the town of um, Avon with high architectural standards with homes from 2,400 to 3,300 square feet just on a base without any upgrades, options, premiums. Um, we expect a, a price, average sales price well in excess of uh, the northern property, most of the northern um, properties and, and most of the surrounding uh, communities. We feel like we're doing a large service to the community, bringing the sewers to places where it is desperately needed, um, um, to homes that are on lots that can't possibly repair their failing septic systems. Um, so we think there's a lot to like about this subdivision and we would respectfully request the favorable recommendation to the town council. Thank you. Any additional questions to the petitioner? Thank you. Thank you. So this is the second time we've had this presented to us. Thoughts, discussion? Well, I think from what we heard from the first time to this time, the petitioner has, I don't want to say maybe gone above and beyond, going out to the different landowners to, to get to a, a compromise. And she mentioned the Smith property, and which I know where that is, and the other ones the 17, 18, 19, and 20 lots. Uh, the pushback was the lot size of 12,500, and those lots are all 12,500. You've got a buffer, you've got a WCCD easement there. I mean, you've got so many things that that are playing. I, I do not think that, but playing to the, to the advantage of those existing landowners to keep as much woods and and wildlife there as possible. As she did indicate, I think it's a very positive move to bring sewer down to the landowners that are down there at 100 South, who as one gentleman, and I don't remember his name, Mr. Plumber, or, they have septic issues all the time. So at least they're gonna encumber a large cost of that just to get it there for those landowners and if they want to tie into the WCCD, that's up to them. The only thing that I just say is, and this is my own personal opinion, limit your tree removal and leave it at 39 homes and I think everybody will be happy. But I, I, I support what they're trying to do. And she did mention one other item as a commitment. I, I think it was a type one buffer, is that? Does that ring a bell or I don't know if that's what she said or not. But I yeah. would like to add what, that to What was that called from the it's, county? It's from the county ordinance because you don't have a buffer between residential uses, but the county has different types of buffers in their ordinance. And I figured since these were county residents, I could at least look to the county zoning ordinance for guidance. Um, but I'm offering to provide type one vegetative materials and there's a pick list there that they can pick whatever materials they want and I can provide them that material. But I'm, I'm happy to do that for um, for the homeowners that I haven't reached. And that's and I, called a, a type one buffer from the county? Yeah, I, I can't do 
the actual, um, all of it. There's a pick list and some of it includes berms and buffers and I can't do that in the WCCD easement. But I can commit to provide them the equivalent vegetative materials for the county type one buffer um, for them to plant on their property. Okay. Maybe a suggestion between now and if this, well, getting this to the town council that you can kind of lay out the language that you need to support what you're trying to say and do. So what I would add is that I, I agree um, with what Greg has said here. We've seen some developments um, where the developer doesn't work as well with the surrounding properties. And, and what we've seen is an attempt to, to work with uh, homeowners that are in the surrounding properties. I think R2, uh, going from RB to R2, to R2 is also what the neighborhood is to these. Is, although it's not contiguous, it still is R2. So it is consistent with what we see to Hickory Hills. Hickory Knoll. Hickory Knoll. So through the, the development to the east, that is not contiguous to the property. Um, and it's residential being developed in a residential area. So it, it's not like we're having commercial or industrial like uh, with what we heard in previous case here. It's residential for residential. So I think, again, that I like that Pulte has been making a good faith effort to work with the surrounding residents, especially with, I think it's very, very good seeing super bring, being brought down to 100 South. I agree that is advantageous for the residents that live on 100 South. I agree. I, the idea that we're going to be able to address the sewer and septic issues of the surrounding neighbors who um, at no expense to themselves or at limited expense to themselves as opposed to having to bring it all the way down um, and you know having... The petitioner pay for that is a plus to the immediate neighborhood um, that's um, that provides a benefit not only to the whoever and however this is developed the residents of this new development but to the surrounding neighbors and and that's um, positive um, whether they have 41 homes or 12 homes that's that's a that's a positive thing um, other thoughts? In that case, does anybody, does anybody want to make a motion? I'll make a motion. Before we do that, uh, on your sample motions in front of you, you can omit everything after except that's already been changed in the staff report. Can you say that one more time, Ian? On the sample motions in front of you, you can omit everything after, or including and after except, um, as that condition has already been changed within the staff report. So the comma after file should be a period. Correct. And everything else deleted. Correct. Got it. Okay. I will try to make a motion here. Um, I move that we forward a favorable recommendation to the town council for ZA 24-01 Pulte Canic Derringer, a zoning map amendment to rezone 23.1 acres from Hendricks County RB to R2. Since it has satisfied all the requirements for zoning map amendment under state law, subject to the commitments outlined within the staff report on file. I'll second. We have a, a motion and a second. Take a vote. Catherine Ransberg. Four. Paul Guckerberger. Four. Bill Reed. Four. Jennifer Spencer. Four. Greg Susan. Four. Dave Kaufman. Four. Okay, motion carries. I'd like to thank everybody for uh, their participation on this agenda item and for being so accommodating with our time restrictions. <laughs> okay, next agenda item. All right, next up we have DPR 2402, Brewster's Ice Cream. It's a request for approval of a development plan. Um, this is a ministerial petition, no waivers associated with it. So I'll try and be brief here. 
This request for approval of a development plan to allow for the construction of a 1,700 square foot single story ice cream shop with drive up service lane. There's no significant planning history associated with the parcel. It was platted back in 1999. Uh, they did receive a special exception to allow for a drive through uh, within tier one uh, from the Board of Zoning Appeals on February 20th. It's located at 50 South Avon Avenue, Avon, Indiana. It's 1.1 acres. This is the property in question, uh, just west of the intersection of Galen Drive and South Avon Avenue. Um, in brief, uh, staff has reviewed the development plan and we find it to be consistent with all the standards of the Unified Development Ordinance. Again, no waivers were requested uh, as part of this. Um, here are the elevations um, for you to take a look. Those all meet the architectural standards. Um, for the overlay district. Additionally, here is the site plan here. Um, the petitioner was very uh, accommodating of staff's comments uh, regarding landscaping. So they did uh, include the necessary changes from their first revisions. Everything looks great here. Um, there's one caveat, everything's good here. There's one caveat. Uh, the Public Works Department does have a future planned improvement along Avon Avenue. Um, that may may not include the um, expansion of Avon Avenue, which would require the dedication of right away. We're early on in that phase uh, of, of the plan. We still don't know at this point how much right of way uh, is necessary. And I've coordinated with our director of public works regarding this. Uh, so um, typically, uh, for, I believe is a primary arterial, it would require a 60 foot half right of way dedication. Um, we may not need that much. So I've included a commitment that basically says, um, coordinate with the Department of Public Works regarding uh, right of way dedication, as well as the landscaping that is proposed here. Um, again, I'm not sure of the timing of that Avon Avenue. I don't want the petitioner to have to install landscaping in this location just for it to be removed six, three months later, however long. Um, so we do recommend approval of DPR 2402 Brewster's ice cream subject to the following conditions. We have our standard conditions. Any revised plans must comply with all commitments and conditions noted as part of any approval granted that a landscape bond is required for section 6.1 D3 of the UDO and the bond must be provided to the town of Avon prior to the issuance of a full certificate of occupancy. The development shall comply with all relevant portions of the town code and comments by public works, the fire department and crossroad engineers at the pre-construction meeting. And then just that last one, the petitioner shall dedicate right of way as required by the director of public works, but not to exceed 60 foot half right of way to accommodate the planned Avon Avenue road improvements. Uh, the petitioner shall coordinate with the planning director and the public works regarding proposed parkway landscaping. Um, because again, a lot of that plan is in the air at the moment. Um, with that, I'm available for questions. Questions for staff? Okay, there being no questions for staff, petitioner may begin, you have 10 minutes. Thank you. Uh, for the record, my name is Brian Munch, Munch Engineering, offices at 4000 Clarks Creek Road, Plainfield, Indiana, 46168. Uh, I get the privilege tonight to represent Brewster's Ice Cream, and I'd like to introduce Brewster's Ice Cream to the commission. Uh, Brewster's Ice Cream is a walk-up ice cream parlor where they make their own ice cream inside, uh, using a lot of fruits and whatnot to make that ice cream. Uh, there is no restaurant. There is no indoor seating. It is all walk-up or drive-up, drive-through type type um, service. It is uh, a, a new <clears throat> type of ice cream parlor where, um, like I said, they do make ice cream on the site itself, uh, but we do have no, we do not have any indoor dining or do we serve any type of food uh, items other than the ice cream um, desserts. With that said, <clears throat> I'll be brief tonight because I know you have a full agenda. Uh, staff did a very good job presenting our case as well as summarizing our case in the staff report. Uh, we have, through the technical review committee, uh, revised the site plan to be uh, compliant with recommendations by staff and working with staff to get uh, the site plan as presented in front of you. This is a platted lot in a commercial park, as mentioned by staff, platted in 1999. 
there is infrastructure in place to service our our proposed uh, use. There is sanitary. We do have access off the public right of ways. There are easements in place for cross uh, with some of the development to the west. Uh, recently, this planning commission approved development to the west, and there were some modifications to the original platted drainage infrastructure. Uh, we have reviewed that. We are in compliant with that. And actually, if you're very familiar with the site where we're located behind the shell station, the drainage way that you see off to the west in the site plan has been come overgrown with, with heavy vegetation, scrub material. It is our proposal to remove that and, and actually increase the capacity of that small drainage way, restoring it back to its original condition, if you will. Um, we are in agreement with staff recommendations and we are willing to work with staff on the public right of way associated with Avon Avenue and, and what improvements need to be made along Avon Avenue moving forward. <coughs> um, if that, Ian, could you show the building elevations quick? Sure. <clears throat> Thank you. Mm -hmm. um, Brewster's is a is a corporate um, entity. The uh, the developer and the owner of the ice cream parlor is with me tonight. Um, but what you see in front of you is their standard um, architectural features for the, for the uh, for the proposed use. Uh, we have modified that. Uh, the previous planning director that we worked with, Bill Peoples, and, and the architect have come up with this that to be compliant with the Avon ordinance when it. Uh, look at the building materials, building standards, and the ratios of, of various materials to, to get to this uh, this rendering. With that, I'll be more than happy to answer any questions that you may have. Do I understand you're not asking for any waivers? That is correct, ma'am. Okay. Is there going to be outdoor seating then? There is. There, if you go back to the site plan quick. Greg, if you look uh, between the east side of the building elevation in the Avon Avenue, we do have a concrete patio adjacent to our bicycle parking uh, that will have some outdoor dining uh, associated with it. It's uncovered. It's you know just a concrete patio. Thank you. And if I recall from the last time we were here on this, um, and I believe this may be a question for staff. The understanding was that this would be a right in, right out. There would be no left-hand turns coming out of that because we, of the because of the location to the roundabout to 36 to there being another building across the street that also has. Um, so is that my understanding? That, that that is that is a correct understanding. Uh, as as Ian proposed, there's going to be some improvements along that direction. <clears throat> Uh, we recognize that the entrance to the south, be the southeast corner of this parcel, uh, will be modified to be right in, right out only. And we're in agreement with that, especially with the proximity to the roundabout just south of this location. And that's a commitment you're making? Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Further questions for the petitioner? Well, the road into this then is a private road? That's correct. So you're going to maintain that, or who maintains that road? Actually, there are cross easements in place uh, with the development to the west um, that we they will be maintaining it as long with, with us. So there's a joint responsibility to maintain that private driveway. And actually, there's a petition uh, on your agenda for later on tonight that's also going to be utilized that driveway. So there's a, a kind of a multi-party responsible for that drive maintenance. <coughs> that's in place right now. That for us, and then there is paperwork in, soon to be signed for the family promise that's also on your agenda tonight. Thank you. Any further questions for the petitioner? Okay, thank you very much. Okay, do we have people signed up for this? Yes, the first speaker is Maddie Walsh. Walsh. Hello, uh, my name is Manoj. I am the owner for this Brewster shop and I just request the town to consider it and approve it. Uh, it will bring a uh, few jobs to the high school kids in Brewster's in Avon and as well as we are planning to hire three or four uh, assistant managers to run it. So. That's just my request to Tom. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. 
Next. Anybody else? And next we have Sanoz Sanalan. Okay. That's all. Is that it? Yes. Okay. Does the petitioner wish to rebut the support for your... <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Let's go ahead with the <clears throat> discussion. We've had this presented to us once before. Well, I'm just surprised Brian didn't bring any samples with him. <laughs> the only the only thing that I saw when I read through this when they responded to staff's uh, email was um, the dumpster. You're doing everything, but it didn't say it was going to be masonry. Is is a if you could come to the podium to respond to that. Yeah. Oh. The, the original location of the of the trash enclosure was uh, kind of off to the south, and there were some there were some issues with uh, the proximity to the drainage ways. So we moved it back up onto property, and obviously it's moved back up onto property in the current location. We are committing to make it of like materials of the building, which would be masonry. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any further discussion, questions, comments? Okay. So, to follow up on that. So, if we make that a commitment or a condition, you're good with that. Yes, okay. sir. Thank you. Okay. I was going to do that too. So. Okay. If there are no, if there's, if there's no further discussion, I will entertain a motion. Make a motion. I move that we approve DPR 2402 Brewster's Ice Cream, a development plan review, review to allow for the development of a 1,700 square foot single story ice cream shop with drive up service lane. Since it has satisfied all the requirements for a development plan review under state law and subject to the approved findings of fact, subject to the following conditions. One, any revised plans must comply with all commitments and conditions noted as part of any approval granted. Two, landscape bond is required per section 6.1 D3 of the Unified Development Ordinance. This bond must be provided to the Town of Avon prior to the issuance of a full certificate of occupancy for the subject site. Three, the development shall comply with all relevant portions of town code and comments by public works, the fire department, and <coughs> crossroad engineers at the pre-construction meeting. Four, the petitioner shall dedicate right of way as required by the Director of Public Works, but not to exceed a 60-foot half right-of-way to accommodate the planned Avon Avenue Road improvements, the petitioner shall coordinate with the Planning Director and Public Works regarding the proposed parkway landscaping. And five, the trash bin to be constructed shall be of like materials of the uh, said development. Do I hear a second? Second. Okay, let's take a vote. <clears throat> Catherine Ransberg? Four. Paul Guggenberger? Four. Bill Reed? Four. Jennifer Spencer? Four. Greg Susan? Four. Dave Kaufman? Four. Okay, motion carries. Thank you. Thank you. And I would like to suggest banana cream pie ice cream. <laughs> Just... Thank you. <laughs> um, it is now 10 after 8. Uh, we've got several other items to go through, I suggest we take a five minute recess. <clears throat>
Are we ready? Okay, we are back. Just a reminder, conversations should be taken outside. Cell phone calls should be taken outside. Turn your cell phones on mute. And we are moving on to the next agenda item. All right, this is PUDA 2401 Easton Gray PUD amendment, uh, Carter property. It's a request for approval of an amendment to a PUD. I'm gonna make this one short and sweet. It's pretty straightforward. Um, it's a request for forwarding of a favorable recommendation to the town council for an amendment to the Easton Gray plan unit development to include a one acre parcel as part of the PUD's river district, river walk district. Uh, so in short, they're not making any, any changes to the text of the PUD, any of the standards of the PUD. Um, they're just including a one acre parcel into the PUD. As I understand it, this uh, parcel was a, was a holdout. Um, they didn't wish to sell and then later decided that they did want to sell. Um, so they're now incorporating this in their larger plan unit development. East and Gray uh, plan unit development. We shall be uh, familiar with that. Uh, it's PUD 2103 East and Gray. Um, again, this subject lot that we're talking about today was not part of the original PUD approval. Uh, it is outside of the corporate limits of the town of Avon. So there is a super voluntary annexation petition on file as well. Um, they just need to rezone this. It's 5918 East US Highway 36 Avon, Indiana. It's one acres. This is the uh, lot in question here, this one acre lot. Um, all of this up here is the planned uh, unit development, East and Gray. So we're just incorporating this into that. Can you go back? What is that circle right there? Is that box with the red? What mm, is that? You know, I'm not sure offhand, but I'm pretty sure I could probably answer your question. Um, It'll be part of the River Walk District and it'll uh, have to abide by all of those approved uses, conditions, and commitments that were approved as part of the Eastern Gray PUD. Um, this site does currently have access off of U US 36, um, but that access would be closed and they would uh, gain access from the internal public roadway system being constructed as part of that uh, Eastern Gray development. Uh, here's a, a conceptual plan of what would be planned in this area. All of this is the, the River Walk District here. So we do recommend uh, that the Planning Commission forward a favorable recommendation to the Town Council for PUDA 2401 East and Gray PUD Carter property, subject to no conditions. <clears throat> With that, I am available uh, for questions. So this is a single family residence right now? Currently, yes. And and it would that would be demolished and incorporated into the Eastern Gray yes. planning. Yes. Okay. Any further questions for staff? Okay. <clears throat> I guess the town is the petitioner, correct? No, the petitioner is here today. Okay. Okay. So we'll have we'll to ask the petitioner to come forward. Good evening, Steve Brehob with Banning Engineering. Not the petitioner, but the petitioner's representative. Good petitioner enough. is uh, Republic, Address. oh, 853 Columbia Road, Plainfield, 46168. Thank you. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> so as, as Ian has said, when the Eastern Gray PUD was approved um, in 2021, this one acre lot was a holdout. Um, the developer reached out to them again late last year and said, we're about ready to start work. Are you sure you don't want to sell? And they had changed their mind by then. So the developer was able to purchase that piece of property 
Um, it's the small one acre area outline that has access to 36, currently single family residential home on there um, that will be demolished. Um, and that area then will be absorbed into the river walk area. We'll accept all the architectural controls, conditions, zoning, everything in the East and Gray PUD and everything that applies to the river walk area. It's a pretty simple request. Um, Just, uh, we've lost the picture on this side screen. So. It's been cutting in and out. Has it? Okay. Um, yeah, it, it'll probably come back. There, you go. there we go. Okay. So simple request, but still we have to go through the process, um, albeit much shorter than the first time through with Eastern Gray, but to bring this piece with into the PUD. So that being said, I'd be happy to answer any questions that you have. Any questions for the petitioner? And if I could add, Greg, to answer your question, the red box is around one of the existing homes that is probably torn down now. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Has there anybody signed up to speak on this agenda item? Kim Picard. Okay. Kim Picard, who I guess is maybe left. Yes. I spoke to them. Um, they were in the back. Um, they're adjacent property owners to area F. And I, it was my understanding that they didn't know what, you know, what, what we were here doing this evening. And so had questions <clears throat> about when the road that they live along would be connected. Okay. Um, but it doesn't really have anything to do with the petition this evening. Okay. Thank you. Okay, public hearing for this section or for this agenda item is closed. Um, discussion? Anybody want to say anything? I think it is a nice move to incorporate that property in the development because it kind of was a, a standout there. Um, so glad to see that the homeowner developer could come to an agreement on that. So I, think I, I do too. I think that's a... I'm glad to see that that was able to be resolved um, amicably. So if there's no further discussion, I'll entertain a motion. I make that motion. I'll move that we forward a favorable recommendation to the town council for PUD A24-01 Eastern Gray Riverwalk Carter plan unit development <coughs> amendment to the one acre, 1.00 acres parcel to the existing Eastern Great PUD Riverwalk section. Since it has satisfied all the requirements for a plan unit development amendment under state law, subject to the commitments outlined within the staff report on file with an additional commitment. Okay. <laughs> okay I guess that last part, pardon. Is there a second? Okay. We have a motion and a second. Let's take a vote. Catherine Rainsberg. Four. Paul Guckenberger. Four. Bill Reed. Four. Jennifer Spencer. Four. Greg Zusan. Four. Dave Kaufman. Four. Okay. We now move on to our next agenda item, and I understand that um, Mr. Zusan will be stepping out for this particular item, which is family promise. This is ZA2403 Family Promise. Uh, it's a request for approval of a zoning amendment. Um, they are requesting a favorable recommendation to the town council to rezone 0 0.72 acres from C2 to R5. There's no significant land use history associated with this property. Um, the properties are currently owned by the town of Avon. Uh, it's located at 72 and 1,000 South Avon Avenue, um, again, 0 0.72. It's zone C2 and located within Tier 3 of the U.S. Highway 36 Overlay Zoning District. These are the properties in question here, outlined in red. 
again, we're looking to rezone it from C2 to R5, and that's to uh, provide for the development of an eight unit townhome development, um, which would equate to an 11.1 .1 units per acre development. The 2017 feature land use cluster map doesn't have an overt recommendation for this property. Uh, again, in those cases, we either assume the underlying zoning uh, represents the re use recommendation or we extend a, a nearby land use recommendation. In this case, uh, the only nearby uh, land use recommendation is for neighborhood retail. Uh, that's to the north. And uh, the underlying zoning of a subject property is zone C2. Uh, so the proposed land use doesn't uh, necessarily align with those recommendations. Uh, in blue, we have neighborhood retail here, so it just slightly overlaps. Um, the 2018 thoroughfare plan does designate Avon Avenue as a primary arterial street. Uh, again, primary arterial streets have a 120-foot uh, right-of-way, uh, which would result in the dedication of a 60-foot half right-of-way. Uh, just as with Brewster's, this is, I should have mentioned that before, this is right uh, just south of Brewster's. Um, so they're going to encounter the same commitment in which the uh, Public Works Department does have planned road improvements for Avon Avenue, which they are currently uh, in design of. And um, we therefore recommend that the petitioner actively work with the planning director and the director of Public Works regarding the necessary right-of-way dedication. Um, this here is the proposed development here, the proposed site developments. Um, now with the uh, road uh, expansion here, we are looking at issues, um, you know, potential issues with the design should the right of way come up directly to the houses. Um, the petitioner is well aware of this. They are working with the um, public works department diligently. Um, but today we're not here really to discuss the design of the lot, um, just as to whether we uh, are willing to rezone it tonight. Uh, but again, the petitioner is well aware of the issue that may arise with that road expansion <coughs> and they, they are working on it. Again, these are single family attached houses. These are townhomes. Um, they will be required to meet the uh, architectural standards for single family residences. Um, this is located in the 36 overlay, but the architectural standards for the 36 overlay do not apply to single family residences. They will gain access from the private drive, just as um, Brewster did as well. So they will gain access from that uh, right in, right out only there. With that, we do recommend that the plan commission forward a favorable recommendation to the town council for ZA 2403 family promise. Uh, we did exclude uh, some uses um, because we do find that the townhomes are appropriate. Um, but that other uses that would be allowed under the, sorry, under the R5 uh, zoning would not be appropriate for this location. Um, so that would be apartment building small, apartment building large, upper story residential, fraternity, sorority, or student housing, and a mass transit facility, all which are typically permitted under the R5 zoning, um, but that we don't find are appropriate for this uh, location. And then additionally, the petitioner shall dedicate the necessary right-of-way as required by the Director of Public Works up to a 60-foot half right-of-way to accommodate the planned road improvements along Avon Avenue. With that, I am available for questions. And just as a reminder, this is a, a, a zoning change request. So Correct. this is not a ministerial decision that we would be making. Correct, yes. Tonight. Okay. <clears throat> So, Questions for staff? Yeah, Ian, on your staff comments, maybe I'm reading this wrong, but in the second paragraph at the end, um, where you're talking about what the future land use cluster map um, indicates, like the proposed land use does not align with either of these recommendations. Mm -hmm. it's, I'm, I'm not sure what I'm reading and what, what you're talking about here. Can you ex maybe explain that? Sure. Um, so, you know, the, the future land use recommendation, really the closest thing we've got here is the uh, neighborhood retail. Um, so it doesn't necessarily align with that, but it doesn't necessarily have to. We, right, we pay reasonable regard um, to the comprehensive plan and what the comprehensive plan allows. 
Um, in this case, staff finds that a deviation from the recommendations of the comprehensive plan are uh, suitable for this site. <clears throat> and these are townhomes? Correct, yes. So is the thinking that <clears throat> I don't know what the future holds here. Um, there's one or two houses to the south of that of this development. So there's potential that more townhomes could be developed there. But I'm assuming those are also C2, so there could be commercial devel development there if those landowners would sell. Yes, that's correct. I believe that uh, the petitioner may have a plan for these lots have not yet acquired them. Um, I don't want to speak too much as to that, but they may have more insight on that. But yes, as those uh, sites currently are, they could develop as commercial. Who would have more insight to that? The petitioner. The petitioner, okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank I you. do have a question. I'm looking, and may, this might be <clears throat> if we could go back to the prohibited uses slide. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so upper story residential, but I'm if I'm looking at this, it looks like these are townhomes that have second stories. So could you clarify that? Upper story residential is typically a residential unit above a commercial use below. Thank you. I thought that's, that's what that was, but I just wanted to confirm. It doesn't yes. prohibit two-story residential. Correct, yes. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Um, so how do you determine that it's uh, an appropriate exception when you say the underlying uh, zoning doesn't match and there's no, no nearby uh, ones that, that match? Just by uh, looking at the surrounding land uses and, and uh, deeming its appropriateness based on, on that and it's uh, um, whether it be harmonious to those land uses. But everything around it is commercial? Yes, uh, just south of it is residential here, and then further south, um, we have we have more residences as well. This is kind of a transitional type of space, I think. There's diff we've got yeah. educational, we've got residential, we've got commercial, kind of a mishmash. But for now, it's going to end up with a residential sandwich between commercial, right? Oh well, these are residential down south. Okay. So right now it would be. You said there's a commercial. Yeah, these these two they're zoned commercially, but their present use is residential. Okay. Right. I was Sing, talking about from a single from family a zoning. They could become a. They yeah, they they, they they yeah they could because they're zoned commercial. Mm -hmm. Is what I was saying. Yes. yes. But the current use is residential. Yes. That's what I thought. Okay. Any further questions for staff? If there's no further questions for staff, we ask the petitioner to come forward. <clears throat> Hi, I'm Julie Randall. I'm the executive director of Family Promise of Hendricks County. I'm going to have my team introduce themselves too. Could you provide your address, yes, please? Yes, please. Yeah. 238 North Vine Street, Plainfield, Indiana, 46168. My name is uh, Andrew Walker. I am developer with Radiant Community Development Corp. And I am excited to bring this project to Avon. Steve Breha, Banning Engineering, 853. Blah, blah, blah. Okay. <laughs> you look familiar. <laughs> you guys, thank you so much for this opportunity to talk a little bit about Family Promise and about this project. For people who aren't familiar with our organization, around 24 to 28 percent of people who live in Avon are unable to meet their basic needs. So these are people who um, need help with rent, need help with utilities, don't have enough money for food, for child care, and for transportation. And so Family Promise provides services throughout Hendricks County to, to focus on that. Overall, it's about 36% of Hendricks County residents that can't meet their basic needs. Um, and we do that in the, lots of different ways. Here's kind of a list of the services that we provide. If you, actually, we were in this room about, I don't know, eight or nine years ago. If you may remember that, some of you have been in Avon for a while. Um, we had our very first resource center right next to the Avon Library. Um, that used to be the Habitat for Humanity House, and then it was vacant for a while, and um, Avon Library owned it. 
And then we purchased it and we actually, we rented it from Avon Library and we had our very first resource center there. Um, our organization has grown tremendously since that time. And now we have our resource center um, located on Vine Street um, in Plainfield. Um, we also have a shelter where we provide um, emergency shelter for families. Um, and that's located on Township Line Road and 267 in Plainfield. Um, we also have a hotel shelter program, like right now, anytime any law enforcement officers in Hendricks County encounter anyone who's experiencing homelessness, we have a program through hotels throughout the county where we house them and then move them into permanent housing. We have an extensive permanent housing program. Um, last year, we ended homelessness for 175 households. So these were people that were either in our shelter, in hotels, living in their car, living in tents, and we moved those families into a permanent home. Um, we're really proud that we're able to do that. Um, we stay with our families for up to two years to make sure that they stay stable. So we're not just getting them off where they're living and into a home, but we stay with them for a while to make sure um, that their life continues to progress and things continue to become more stable for them. We also do homelessness prevention. That's a really big part of our work. Um, we're in every eviction hearing um, in the county trying to keep people in their homes to avoid homelessness. So last year we prevented homelessness for over 1,200 households. Um, so that means when they're about to lose their home, we step in, um, help pay rent, do assessments to figure out what's going on, how do we make things better? Um, and then we continue to stay with those families again so that they can become stable and stay stable. Um, and this is throughout all of Hendricks County. We only serve families and households that are in Hendricks County. Um, and we can do all this housing, but if we don't have the stability services to help these families remain stable, then it, they're just going to end back up in the situation that they already are in. Um, and so we have other assistance. We provide legal aid, um, utility assistance. We have an early learning center in Plainfield. It's our only affordable early learning center in the whole um, county. Um, we also just opened up immigrant services um, in downtown Plainfield where we provide um, things that new immigrants to our community need in order to, to acclimate to our community and become stable. We have two resource centers, and these are kind of the hubs for our work, one in Plainfield and another one in Brownsburg. Um, we're at the Harris Academy in Brownsburg. We have a resource center located there too. Um, we work really hard to not wait for people to ring our doorbell, um, but to actually get out into the community and do what we can to help families become stable. So this is kind of the work of Family Promise. And I personally, I've been a social worker um, in Hendricks County for 28 years. And so we always run into the same four barriers in Hendricks County. Um, the first is a lack of living wage jobs. We're doing really well with that now. The second was early learning. So we just don't have enough affordable child care um, that's accessible to families who need it. Um, the third is a lack of transportation. So, you know, people who aren't, don't have driver's license or, or have vehicles that run have a really hard time getting around in our community because we don't have public transportation. And the fourth biggest barrier is a lack of attainable housing. Um, we have done so great in the 28 years that I've been doing this work in our community, and we've had a lot of great projects. Um, we just need more of it. We need more homes for everyone in our community. It's, it's great. We have a great place to live. I've raised all my children here. I, I love this community. Um, but I'm a white, upper-class woman who's married and has three children and lots of cars and a farm. And I'm almost done. And so what I'm saying is that we need more housing for all of us. And so we're really excited to be able to op have the opportunity for more housing for people. Um, this is an overview of our projects. It's eight townhomes. Um, Family Promise of Hendricks County will be the developer, or will be the owner. Um, Radiant CDC will be the developer. They're all three-bedroom, um, two-story townhomes. Um, the tenants will be uh, below 60% of the area median income. So the median income for um, Avon is about $86,000 a year. So the units will be for families that make less than sixty-five around $65,000 a year. Um, so this, these are, this is housing for people that are um, our teachers. These are people that work in our warehouses. These are people who are CNAs or nurses. These are, these are families and people in our community um, that need rent that was a blow $1,200 to $1,000 a month. The average rent right now in, Hendrick, in Avon, Indiana is $1,450 for a two-bedroom apartment. 
Um, timing for this project, um, obviously we're in the zoning process now. This is a grant that we're receiving from the Indiana Housing, Indiana Housing Community Development Authority. And so we've submitted that grant application. Um, in August, we hope to be awarded that grant. And this grant is a probable grant. It's not one of those that's highly competitive. So um, there's about a 90% chance that we'll receive the funds um, for that. Um, ground bank breaking would be in March of 25, and then we would open in the fall of 25. Here's, a, here's what they look like. Tax Tax credit projects um, that like this, um, they look just like market rate projects. There's nothing different. Everything is made exactly the same way. It's just that we're able to use tax credits so that they can be affordable. And here's a little bit of, of more about what they look like. And I'll let Steve talk a little bit more about the site plan, but this is the interior as well. Three bedrooms, two and a half bath, about 1,400 square feet. So real quickly, um, site plan, uh, the site's accessed from the private drive that uh, was discussed in the Brewster's petition earlier this evening. Brewster's um, would be immediately to the north. Um, townhomes are fronting on the streets with rear drive in the back, and the hope is then that maybe that drive can be extended further south and that something can happen with those other parcels to the south. We realize that we've got to dedicate right away along the street. The exact amount um, has yet to be determined. So we're, we're hopeful that it doesn't have a big negative impact on this site, but um, we'll make it work however we need to. You have two more minutes. I'm done. <clears throat> Is that it? Sure. Oh, great. Okay. <clears throat> I need to answer any questions. Okay. Questions for the petitioner? Um, so I have a question. Um, in your, you're asking for this to be rezoned. Um, in your efforts to find to be able to create affordable housing within Avon, um, in looking for parcels, what has that search been like? It's very, very, very difficult to find parcels that we can build on, let alone um, that are suitable for our kind of project. Um, it's it's really difficult. Um, we have we've had a lot of luck um, in Plainfield, and we've been really grateful. Um, it's not been that there hasn't been support in Avon for projects like ours. It's just really hard to find land to build projects like this. Right now, we have one Preserves of Avon is our only affordable housing that we have um, in Avon. Um, everything else, well, you know, that used to be a, like a little motel at 267 and um, 36. I forget the name of that apartment, but that's that's all we have. We have that apartment, and I think there's 20 units there, and we have preserves of Avon, and nothing else in our community is affordable. And it's really not Avon's fault. It's just that we don't have a lot of older buildings and older town places that are rentals. Um, you know, we're a new town, and so it makes it more difficult to have um, like mom and pop landlords um, providing rentals. So we do the best we can. And it's just something that we truly, truly need in this community so that, you know, all of us can live and work in the community that we love. Okay. Other questions for the petitioner? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Do we have anybody signed up to uh, speak on this agenda item? We do not. With that case, then we will close the public hearing portion on this agenda item. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Is there anybody here who would like to speak on the agenda item who did not sign up? Okay, now we close the public hearing. <laughs> this is why you have a vice president. <laughs> Discussion. <clears throat> Back to the criterion, and again, uh, Ian, it helped me on this because as I'm reading criterion one, it it sounds like with what I see there written that it doesn't meet criterion one because it, it goes back to the proposed use does not align with the nearby land use recommendation nor the underlying zoning district, yet there's residential to the south, but it's not R2, it's probably a C2 also mm -hmm. correct yes okay so does it meet criterion one or does it not meet? i'd criterion say it does one? not it pardon 
I'd say it does not. Does not. But again, it, it directs us to pay reasonable regard. We don't have to meet each of these criteria. Uh, it's not like a, a variance where we have to meet every single one in order to, to give an approval. Uh, we just pay reasonable regard to them. So we have a lot of wiggle room here. I kind of look, counsel is ready to say something yeah. for us. It's five factors, no one controls. There were many years where there were cases that said, yeah, if you don't get number one, it's done. And the courts came back, Supreme Court of Indiana came back and said, no, 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 no. We never said that. You take all five factors and it's the totality of them. That's how you determine whether it leans toward favorable or unfavorable. So you have to take all five together and you could meet one, but if you're really strong there and you didn't meet four, plain commission and the town council could decide they still want to grant it. Or you could have weak, you could meet three weekly and not meet two very strongly. And so the court said, look, you're going to have to use your discretion. These are the five factors, but you view it in the totality, taking all that together, just which way does it lean? That's the best way to explain it. Thank you. Because between criterion one and criterion two, the staff has written it. Criterion one, no. Criterion two, kind of, kind of, maybe, maybe not. Um, you know, as far as desirable use for which a land, I think it's good. It's a good transitional um, use there, as well as for what's being proposed. You got walkability there. You probably have to do something about being able to get across uh, Avon Avenue, but you're right by the school. Mm -hmm. You're by new restaurant developments right there. So it, it does seem to be a good location for what's being proposed. And I like that the staff, that the petitioner answered the question um, about the properties south that potentially, depending on how things go, that might be future opportunities there. So yeah, it, it feels like it, um, with the clarification uh, from Dan and Ian there, that it feels like it meets the requirements or it meets what we're looking for with the criterion. I, I agree. I, um, the fact that it's a balancing act and just because we have one that doesn't meet, we've got definitely three that to me strongly meet, the strongly, the proposal strongly meets the criteria. Um, and I, um, I like the idea of creating affordable housing in, in, uh, and these I'm assuming would be oriented towards families since they're three bedrooms. Um, and that is affordable housing is really rough in Hendricks County, not just in Avon. <clears throat> I do have a question maybe for the petitioner, if he come forward. So if I understand right, I thought I heard you say this, you re family promise retains ownership of the townhomes, not the, the residents in the townhomes. That's correct. Yes, that's correct. Yeah. It's, so it's a rental property. Okay. And we'll pro provide case management and support services for the people who live there too. So we're still involved with them, with the project, with the people. Um, our property management team um, is a property management team that we use on other properties as well. Um, that work, you know, that we're working hard to keep those families stable for sure. And then I wanted to, because I didn't say specifically, but we're already working with the owners of the properties just to the south of that um, to buy those two lots as well and have a phase two. And that was actually part of our original plan that we came to the town with was that that way we'd have that whole road road front would be those townhomes. It would okay. look really nice there. I think Thank that's you. our plan. Sure. Is there any further discussion? Questions? I'll just make one more statement. I think it is um, a good addition to the community, as you said, to help the, the residents of the county or the west side. Um, and uh, it's nice to have a an organization like Family Promise that's looking to do this, take care of people that, that need this assistance. I, I agree. Family Promise is a great uh, asset to Hendricks County at large and to Avon. And I appreciate all the work that they're doing to improve our improve conditions for everyone in our community. So thank I you so much. That. Thank you. If I may add, yeah. uh, kind of dovetails what we've been hearing. Uh, having said that, though, I always applaud someone who takes the time, A, to look at kind of a needs assessment, and B, come up with a, a potentially tangible way to address it. So you would be commended for that. Thank you so much. Thank you. Any further comments, discussion, questions? 
If not, I'll entertain a motion. I'm going to make that motion. I move that we forward a favorable recommendation to the town council for Z824-03 family promise and zoning map amendment to rezone 0.72 acres from C2 to R5. Since it has satisfied all the requirements for a zoning map amendment under state law, subject to the commitments outlined within the staff report on file, with an additional commitment as follows. Following uses shall be prohibited, apartment building small, apartment building large, upper story, fraternity sorority, or student housing, mass transit facility. Number two, the petitioner shall dedicate the necessary right of way required by the Director of Public Works to accommodate the proposed road improvements along Avon Avenue. Second. Having had a motion and a second, we'll take a vote. Catherine Ransberg. Four. Paul Guggenberger. Four. Bill Reed. Four. Jennifer Spencer. Four. Dave Kaufman. Four. Motion carries. Thank you guys so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Okay, moving on to our next agenda item. We're making good time, folks. <laughs> Oh, yeah, somebody go get Greg. <laughs> Where did Greg go? He's on the board, I promise. So. Yeah. I think he ordered a pizza. <laughs> That's right up the road from me, too. I'm just like, yeah. Welcome back. <laughs> All right, we got ZA 2402 8447 East US Highway 36. Uh, this is another zoning amendment uh, request. Uh, they're requesting the forwarding of a favorable recommendation to the town council to rezone 0 0.88 acres from I-2 to C-2. Uh, there's no significant land use history associated with the subject parcel. It's currently improved with a single-family residence. Again, located at 8447 East U.S. Highway 36, uh, comprised of three parcels at the moment. Um, 0.88 acres. It is located within Tier 1 of the 36 overlay. Uh, so here we can take a look at it. It is uh, these three um, parcels here at the intersection of Casco and uh, U.S. Highway 36 here. Um, to the west, if you're still unsure where we are, this is ABC roofing here to the east. Um, and then this is, I think it's Avon Barber Shop, the Fort Liberty. Um, that's all there to the west. 2017 future land use cluster map designates this area as recommended for area retail. Um, so we find the C2 uh, rezone to be consistent with that land use designation. Um, here is the area retail uh, designation is this large orange blob here on the screen that encompasses much of this area. Um, However, similarly to what we encountered with the uh, Mission Foods last month, uh, the details on this development um, on what's being proposed here at this location are sparse. Uh, the um, petitioner has mentioned a drive-through, uh, but, but they can't lock that in at the moment because they don't have um, a tenant locked in yet, and I'll let them speak to that more. Uh, but it is an important detail. They did go to the town council to do their introduction, um, which where they were asked uh, many of similar questions there. Um, so I just ask that you give reasonable consideration regarding the proposed development occurring as part of this rezone, as it does abut uh, residential uses here. Um, with that said, it is currently zoned I-2. That means that um, somebody could buy right um, conduct a, an industrial use on this property as it stands. Um, so we find that even though we don't have the details, staff finds that even though we don't have all the details of what is being proposed here, that the C2 zoning designation is consistent um, with the land use, and um, we find that to be preferable uh, to an I2 
um, zoning designation here. So we do recommend uh, forwarding a favorable recommendation to the town council for ZA 2402-8447 East US Highway 36, subject to no commitments. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm available to answer them. There is a property on there right now, correct? Yeah, single family residence there, yes. Okay. Is it being used as a single family residence? I'm not sure of that, of whether it's inhabited at the moment. Is, when I look at the map, it looks like, are there three properties that we're talking about here? Yes, those three in red there. And will they be combined into one or is it still going to? They'll, yeah, they'll be combined and presumably combined into one. And you still have not received any additional information? No, didn't, no additional information. Again, I haven't been here this past week. I've been in communications with current staff members to provide me information as they get it. So it's possible that it was provided and it didn't get to me. But uh, as far as I know, no, we haven't gotten any additional information. So this is a request for a zoning change based on potential development, not plans for current not solid plans for current development. Exactly. As I understand it from the petitioner, it's kind of a uh, chicken and the egg thing, right? It's hard to get tenants when the property is not zoned appropriately, and it's hard to get it zoned appropriately when you don't have tenants lined up. Uh, so a bit of a chicken and the egg there. Okay. Any further questions for staff? If not, we'll invite the petitioner to come forward. Please state your name and address, and you have 10 minutes. Hi, good evening. My name is Drew Kelly. I'm with Kelly Commercial Real Estate, and here with my development partner, Sam Zinkin, uh, 5032 North Temple, Indianapolis. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to, to speak with you guys tonight, and you are absolutely correct. So we um, are requesting a zoning change to this property so we can uh, make this more marketable for us to attract a retail tenant to the property. Um, we realize, you know, we haven't provided details and that's not Machiavellian on our part. We, we don't have an end user secured, but we think by rezoning the property that will help us attract uh, somebody uh, for the parcel. Um, we are not requesting a development plan approval. This is just a zoning change. And then we would anticipate coming back with a development plan uh, as soon as we have a tenant in hand. Um, <clears throat> You know, with I-2 and the current zoning, you know, as Ian mentioned, there's a lot of uses that are approved here that just aren't appropriate, we feel like, for the site. And the C-2 zoning, as part of the 2017 Land Use Comprehensive Plan, uh, we felt that uh, Avon would, would want to see this property get rezoned so we can be in line with uh, adjacent properties and stuff along the 36 corridor. Um, we did... Um, I don't know. Did our presentation? I don't know if our presentation got loaded in that we sent over Friday. If not, that's okay. But we just provided some pictures of the current property. To answer your question, there is a resident in the property, so we have the project or the property under contract. Um, we would vacate the property at closing, and if the zoning change is approved, uh, we would de we would demolish the property and clean it up. Right now, there's. <laughs> There's three parcels with three structures on them. It's a ranch, older residential property with a couple sheds and a lot of outdoor storage. And so that would all go away. And we just have a nice clean property ready for uh, a, a retail tenant to come on and, uh, and open there once we were received development plan approval and a tenant in hand. Um, what else am I missing? You know, a little bit about us. So I've been doing this in central Indiana for over 25 years in the retail real estate. Uh, Zinkin and Barker has over 40 years experience in central Indiana in real estate. So we, we do have experience working with these kinds of properties and the kinds of tenants that would be consistent with what you would see along your 36 corridor. Anything else I'm missing? So yeah, I think uh, that's kind of our presentation. Any questions we're happy to answer. Questions for the petitioner? Okay, go ahead and have a seat. Thank Great, you. Thank you. <clears throat> do we have anybody signed up to speak on this agenda item? We do not. Is there anybody present who'd like to come speak on this agenda item? 
public hearing for this agenda item is closed. Hey, Catherine. Yes. I do have a presentation if you want to allow them to come back down. Oh, yes, those, please. Uh, real quick visual. Yep, go ahead. You've got six minutes left. So. Great. Well, I think we covered most of the talking points. We'll just go through the uh, pictures real fast. Thank you. So obviously here's the site. Uh, you've seen that already with Ian's presentation. This, these are pictures of what the property currently looks like. So you see the homes, uh, some of the outdoor storage and the sheds. Uh, so we hope to obviously clean that up by uh, demolishing all of that. Um, here's our site. And then you see all of the um, surrounding C2 zoning currently in place. And so we, we feel like uh, it fits in well with uh, what's already in the area. Um, again, Ian kind of covered this one already. These are a list of uses that are permitted in I2 currently that would not be permitted in C2. Again, you guys know all this, but these just don't feel appropriate for this area. So um, hopefully by changing the zoning, it will eliminate these as potential uses for the property. Things like a solar farm, uh, mineral, um, mineral extraction, uh, refining, cement, gypsum, preservatives, you know, those sorts of things. Um, this this is just one conceptual plan. You know, we don't have a final plan, so our intention isn't to submit this, but we wanted to at least show how a building could fit on the site. And then this is just a little bit about who we are and a sample of some tenants that we've worked with in the past. These aren't necessarily who we would envision on the site, but we have a lot of experience in retail real estate. And that's it. Thank you. Can you go back to the prior slide? Sure. Is there going to be a road cut on 36? No, we would use the existing, in meeting with, with Ian and his recommendations, we would use uh, Gemco Lane and we would, or I'm sorry, Casco Lane, and we would improve that drive up to the entrance of our property. So we would not seek an additional 36 cut. You know that is not in the town of Avon. We are aware, yes. So we know that we would um, need to improve that and then uh, also extend sidewalk across the front of the property along 36. But what is that? Is that because it's on the town, they go through the county then? I don't know the exact details of that. I believe that the section that they may be uh, getting access from uh, is from the is part of the town of Avon. Uh, but I, I don't have those details off the top of my head. Thank you. Thank you. Discussion? Well, I'm not comfortable in giving a, a change of zoning on something that we really don't know what's going to go there. Now, you know, we put in there re prohibitive uses for I-2, but what about prohibitive uses for C-2? If we're going to do that, then we, sh we I think we should lay out what we don't want to see there that's in a C-2 zoning. I like the idea of it being changed from I-2 to C-2, just simply because of the types of <clears throat> businesses that would be permitted in I-2. And those would be, you know, most of those would be removed under C-2, which would be more in keeping with what we want to do with the, you know, 36 overlay corridor. Um, you know, I don't think we want to see any kind of light manufacturing or anything else to be added to that overlay. Um, I agree that it would be helpful to, do we have the C2 prohibit, uh, prohibited businesses available? Give me one sec. Because I don't necessarily object to the idea of just changing the zoning so that we can keep, in, keep it in line with what we want the 36 corridor to look like. But it would, I, don't want I, to be, I agree, it would be helpful. I don't want to be intimidated or scared off that it could be I-2 right now. It's 0.88 acres. Mm -hmm. Setbacks and everything else. I don't know what you can build an I-2 on an 88.88 acres. But man, I'm not against the proposal. I'm just against, and the thought process, I just, how can I approve something that I don't even have any information on other than they just want to change zoning? Any other thoughts on that? Anybody else got some ideas on that? 
Agree, disagree? It seems like we're in between the keeping it with I-2 and what can go in with I-2 or changing it to C-2 and without putting any conditions on it, then it's whatever is acceptable in C-2. And correct me if I'm wrong here, did we remove the uh, requirement of one acre lots on 36? Had to be one acre minimum? Uh, yes, I believe so, yes. That's been removed? Yes. Okay. I'm assuming you're looking for this C2. Yes. Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Maybe it would be good uh, that we continue this and ask for staff to come back with a recommendation on permitted uses C2 in that area. Well, since there doesn't, there's not an imminent need, I mean, we don't have a tenant that's, you know, apparently right now barking at the, or chomping at the bit to get something moving on there. I would not object to that. Give us an opportunity to take a look at C2, compare it to the surrounding area, see if there's any exceptions we want to make. It's a little hard to read on my phone here. It wouldn't be an exhaustive list to, okay. to read out to you. Okay. All of the permitted uses in C2. Anybody wanted to make a motion? Was it, well, was, was there a mention of the drive-through potential, or or was it more that it's not allowed? Is that what was mentioned? You have to get a special exception to have a drive-through. Going to put a drive-through there, right? Yeah, I was thinking when Neil was reading out, they, maybe he was pointing out that it wasn't allowed. Which in our preliminary consultation, they had mentioned a potential, they, okay. potential tenant for a drive-through, as to where uh, that is in the process. If that's still an option, I'm I'm not sure. Yeah, that always makes me wonder because you know buying a property with an expectation of putting a drive-through in when you know that it's not allowed, you know, <laughs> it seems like we there's been a lot of exceptions for drive-throughs. But without we don't have that we, proposal we have, in front of us. I mean, it's all speculation at this right. point. Right. So makes it. Does anybody want to make a motion to continue? I want here. It looks like Ian has the the list here. What's acceptable in C two? Can you give us highlights at least? <laughs> Upper story residential, a nursing home, uh, utility major impact, utility minor impact, child care facilities, community centers, hospitals, municipal and government buildings, libraries and museums, parks and playgrounds, schools, school vocational, religious uses, uh, arts and recreation entertainment indoor, arts and recreation entertainment outdoor, Sports and entertainment stadium, parking garage, parking lot, restaurants of class A and class B, taverns, hotel or motel, dental offices, animal sales, household pets, um, grocery, uh, retail sales and services, automobile services, light, uh, auto, motorcycle, boat, uh, light truck sales or rentals communication services, telecommunication towers, telecommunication facilities, contractor special trade general, which would be a contractor's office. Um, and that's about it. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Matt, I kind of, I starting to agree with Greg uh, without knowing a tenant there that just opens up to a lot of those that probably wouldn't fit in that location, or I wouldn't see as with between the, whatever the development is now that it has Fort Liberty and uh, the electric place and then ABC roofing. It's like, is it, not sure what would be going in there, but I think we need more information. So I would be either um, work with the petitioner to continue this to look at um, getting something more definitive or 
I'm not sure I could support a favorable recommendation at this time. I think but you're not saying that you oppose the rezoning just because you oppose the rezoning, but re -oppose, you would rather wait to see what is going to be presented. I mean, it's like, I think, again, the we don't know what it would be. C2 what? As opposed to I2 what? Did did the petitioner have something you wanted to add? Yeah. I was just going to say, you know, we're certainly open to discussing restrictions on the property. A lot of those things are things that aren't going to make sense or, or what we would want to bring to the site. Another thing I would say, a lot of the uses that were just listed are also permitted in I-2. Um, so they're permitted in both, but it, it, we don't envision, I mean, we're going after... Um, like a coffee shop or a food user or like a bank or a financial institution. So most of those uses aren't going to apply to what we'd like to do here. Furthermore, uh, the property is in tier one of the US 36. So what I read to you uh, was a permitted use table. Tier one of US Highway 36 has additional prohibitions on uh, unfavorable uses. So I had said hotel or motel and auto services light. Each of those would require a special exception by the Board of Zoning Appeals. Uh, retail, sales and service repair, outdoor is prohibited. Um, contractor special trade general is prohibited. Recycling drop-off facilities, plant nurseries are prohibited. Um, so the staff felt that there was sufficient safeguards with that um, tier one overlay and those additional prohibited uses as part of that. So Mr. Taylor, um, when we are doing a zoning change or being asked to make a zoning change, what are our restrictions with regards to, or our obligations with regards to putting any additional prohibitions on the use of that property within that new zoning change? You can, I mean, place, it, you can place conditions on a rezone because there's no right to a rezone. It's discretionary. It carries with the land, correct? Yes, that's true. <clears throat> so if you have uses that you don't feel comfortable with, that would be permitted in um, C2, then you can impose a condition or recommend to the town council that they prohibit certain uses. And you've done that before. Um, and you can do that because it's discretionary. Um, it sounds, you know, again, in this case, it sounds like uh, the petitioner is really after general retail, small retail. What I find, what I think uh, is interesting about this case, this is unusual because this is a down zone. This is someone saying, I want less rights. Mm -hmm. I have industrial permitted permissions. I3, I'm permitted to do all kinds of things. I don't want that. I want less rights. So, and this is the second down zone you've had tonight. Family Promise was commercial three to R5. That's a down zone also. So these are unusual. It does help... Um, it does help, though. It will help the petitioners sell and market the property because there are people who are looking for C2. And that's what they want to, that's where they want to be. And they want to be protected from people around them and having harmonious use. So, uh, again, I think that if there are uh, uses on that uh, in your use table um, that are not addressed by the tier one tier one us 36 is the hardest place in the world to uh, develop right in our at least in our world so it's hard to go there and there are less restrictions but if there are things that you want to prohibit you may say look you can you can do whatever you see to you want but you can't do these things you can do that so maybe it would behoove us to go ahead and continue this for a month have staff work with the petitioner in terms of agreeing and limiting you know putting further limits on what could be developed there, even if they're allowed under C2, uh, obviously in comparing that to the tier one overlay. I mean, the tier one overlay may take care of any concerns um, that we have about how that property would be used, but maybe that would be the best way to approach this. Yeah, I might recommend to the petitioner that they <coughs> provide staff with a list of uses that they have no intention of uh, developing at all. Um, so as to ease any concerns you may have. Uh, I was very limited on time in my final week here. Um, I would have liked to have given you an exhaustive list so we could all take a look at there. Um, so that's something that could 
possibly be done in the future. Have there as well. been any requests for continuances prior to this? There have not. No. Uh, the petitioner has an, has the right to ask for a continuance if you would like to do so. Sure. Yes. We'll, we'll request the continuance. Okay. When would you like a 30 or 60 day continuance? I think 30 day, <clears throat> if that's acceptable, would be appropriate on our end. Okay. Would anybody like to uh, <clears throat> make a proposal that we continue this? at the request of the petitioner. Sure, I'll make a motion. I move that we continue ZA 2402, um, 8447 East US Highway 36 to the uh, April 22nd Planning Commission meeting. We'll second. We have a motion and a second. Catherine Ransberg. Four. Paul Guggenberger. Four. Bill Reed? Four. Jennifer Spencer? Four. Greg Susan? Four. Dave Kaufman? Four. Okay. Petition is continued to next month. Thank you so much. Ladies and gentlemen, we're on our last agenda item. Good for you. <laughs> okay. Let's get it over with. <laughs> CA 2404 Wawa. It's a request for approval of a zoning amendment. Um, they are requesting a, uh, the forwarding of a favorable recommendation to the town council to rezone 3.76 acres uh, from AG to C2. There's no significant land use associated with the subject property. It's currently improved uh, with single family residences. Uh, the addresses are 8063 East County Road 100 North and 925 North County Road 800 East. Again, 3.76 acres currently zoned AG. Um, here are the two properties in question, um, this L shape here uh, at the intersection of 100 North and Dan Jones here. Uh, they are requesting uh, to rezone this property from AG to C2 to allow for the development of a Wawa convenience store and gasoline service station. Uh, the 2017 future land use cluster map does designate this area as recommended for neighborhood retail and we find that the proposed rezone would be consistent with that land use designation. Uh, so here's the land use designation bubble, we'll call it. Um, this is neighborhood retail, a little hard to read on this picture here, um, but this blue area is all neighborhood retail. Uh, there's a conceptual design submitted as part of this petition that you should all have. Um, it shows two lots. Uh, lot 2 depicts a, a Wawa convenience store, an accessory gasoline service station, um, while Lot 1 is labeled as future commercial area. The development has three accesses shown. One access is proposed along 100 north um, as east as uh, possible, and another is proposed along Dan Jones. Um, and then the third one is actually proposed through the lot to the south of the subject property. The petitioner has actually obtained a cross access agreement uh, with the property to the south for that access, uh, which was included in your packet as well. Here's the proposal here. Um, again, the lot number one to the north um, is a vacant lot. It's an out lot here. Uh, we have a Wawa convenience uh, gas station fronting along Dan Jones here. Uh, there's a long access drive a um, water detention facility here and uh, additional screening along the east boundary here. Important note here, UDO chapter 3.334B states that uh, regarding gasoline service stations, if the use of butts a residential district, the hours of operation are limited to 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. unless the applicant can show the use uh, will have no significant effect on the nearby residential district. So uh, with this submittal, the um, petitioner has navigated this standard uh, by pro proposing an intervening lot. Lots, I think it says lot, yeah, lot one um, between the service station and that agricultural residential use uh, to the east there. And they've also shown ag augmented landscaping plantings along that eastern boundary. Now that section of that parcel is merely just an access drive uh, north to south here. 
uh, we will note that the uh, convenience store is uh, fronting upon Dan Jones. Um, it's all he uh, facing towards Dan Jones to the west here. There's nothing in the ordinance that I could find that says that they cannot do this. Um, but again, this is a discretionary petition before you. You have the ability to impose any any uh, necessary conditions you seem fit at this time. Um, so I just want to, that's going to be a point of contention. Uh, you have a letter in front of you that was provided. Um, I got it very recently. And uh, within that letter, um, it does reference uh, that concern. In addition, the petitioner uh, did conduct a traffic impact study for the proposed development. That was also included within uh, your packets that you received. Um, the results of that uh, that review of that traffic impact study by uh, our third party consultant uh, found that new trips associated with the proposed development are anticipated to have minimal impact on the adjacent road network. If you uh, read the uh, review letter to that traffic impact study, um, they basically say that 75% of the trips generated to this um, property are, um, I don't know how they put it, uh, they're not intended specifically for this property. They were driving by this area anyways and they stopped to get gas. Um, read, the, read the letter, it, it, it formulates that better than I have, more eloquently than I have. Um, it did, however, note that consideration should be given to providing right turn lanes at the two side entrances in accordance with the Town of Avon construction standards and ensuring that East County Road 100 North entrance is designed to restrict access to ride in, ride out only as analyzed in the TIS. Uh, I brought this up with the Public Works Department. They've also reviewed the traffic impact study and the, uh, the, the review letter of the tra traffic impact study. And um, they're confident that any necessary road improvements will be imposed upon the petitioner at the time of the development plan review process. Um, with that, uh, staff does recommend uh, that the plan commission forward a favorable recommendation to the town council for ZA 2404, uh, subject to the following commitments that the petitioner shall dedicate a 60 foot half right of way along County Road 100 North. With that, I'm available for questions. <coughs> I do have a, a question for you in on lot one. Lot one's the undeveloped lot, I yes. believe. And that looks like it's a odd shaped lot that extends behind lot two then. Is that correct? Yes, correct. And does that then abut to the residential areas uh, to the east of that then? Yes. So uh, um, you know, my interpretation of this is that the lot was designed this way so as to create that buffer so that the uh, gasoline service station use did does not technically directly abut against a residential use but by by looking at this and based off what you see there's full intention to use that drive to have access to 100 north correct yes which has a there's no median there so is that intended to be a right in right out up at that point yes as i understand it yes okay so do we have a commitment then from the petitioner that they would still honor the hours in the UDO from 5 a.m. to 11 p.m.? No, we do not. So do you believe they're trying to circumvent the UDO by creating that strip? Yes. In, in our standard, um, uh, let's see, where is it? Unless the applicant can show the use will have no significant effect on the nearby residential district. So this standard here um, does give the commission um, some interpretation as to whether they believe that this will be, uh, this will negatively impact that uh, budding land use. What is, any conversation, what's gonna go on the, the lot on, at the north end of the property? None have been had with staff, no. So why are we rezoning that if we don't know what's going to go there? That's a good question. It's a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> just for clarity. Unanswerable questions. Yeah, just for to make sure. So 
we can ask for uh, commitments or conditions on a rezone. So we could put a condition of hours of operation on the rezone. Recommend a condition for this. With your recommendation to the town council, okay. yes. Right. And then the town council can impose the condition. Okay. Can they remove a condition that we recommend? Well, they can, but as we talked about in training, if they do, if they start, if they do that, it may trigger the case coming back to you. Okay. It depends on which way they go. If they're less stringent or more stringent. Yes. Okay. I guess. Any further questions for staff? Okay. Petitioner can come forward. Name and address. Uh, uh, green is on, I take it, right? Uh, I'm Patrick O'Leary. Uh, I'm at 20411. Thank you. Uh, West 12 Mile Road in that Southfield, Michigan. Uh, I'm the president of Blue Peninsula Real Estate. I'm here today with my son, Connor, and uh, Reed Cooksey is our engineer with Stonefield Engineering. Uh, and thank you for the opportunity to talk about this and present it tonight. Um, Ian did a very thorough job, so I'm gonna try to skip over things in my, my uh, presentation here that have already been covered. Um, a big part of uh, why this meets the comprehensive plan is Wawa, the brand, and who they are and what they are. And so I'm gonna spend a few minutes on really you know, delving into that a little bit more. So first, Wawa has a, really a very interesting and remarkable history. I'll keep it short because it's late and I can talk about this for quite a while because it really is interesting. But they've been in business for over 200 years in Philadelphia. Uh, they were originally a foundry. They made diapers back in the day. And one of the sons uh, of the Wood family decided he wanted to be a gentleman farmer. And so he bought acreage in Wawa, Pennsylvania, started a dairy farm. He was naturally a very good businessman. And it turned into the dairy farm, turned into the Milkman of Philadelphia. The Milkman of Philadelphia turned into the Wawa markets. And Wawa only added gasoline about 20 years ago. And that's why they're very different than any other operator in the space, because they grew up as a market, as a food store first, adding gasoline second. Uh, it's a very unique history. Uh, Wawa is not your typical gas station, and this is a fun slide. They've created a bizarrely deep emotional connection with their customers. This is not, this is in Philadelphia. This is not the Super Bowl. This is not a Stanley Cup championship parade. This is simply the opening of a store in Philadelphia of Wawa. That's the crowd that came out. I think it's a pretty remarkable thing when you think of how, how could a, gas convenience store, if you will, generate such an emotional connection. Other interesting points, um, Wawa is privately owned by the Wood family. And about 20 years ago, they created an ESOP, which is an employee stock ownership program, where as the company grows, the Woods family share grows smaller, the employees uh, participate in that. Store managers at Wawa retire millionaires, honestly, it's an incredible um, opportunity and it's uh, it's pretty neat. There's very few of them in the country and this is one of the largest ones. Um, Wawa's commitment to its people is remarkable. They have incredible benefits, etc. cetera. Um, but the statistic that tells you everything is the industry average for an employee is seven months. Wawa's average is seven years. Uh, that tells you a lot on how they treat their people. Wawa is part of the communities they work in. Um, they set up a foundation. They give $150 million since that foundation's been started. Um, and and they, they do it. I mean, I was, I was listening to Family Promise, which just sounds like an amazing organization. They can petition a local store. The local store brings it to a board that consists of, um, you know, executives as well as employees. And, and they, they put that money down into the communities they're in. Uh, Wawa also, interestingly enough, is the number one EV charger in the United States. So, uh, so out of all of this uh, is a love affair. And Wawa customers have a love affair. 
it's crazy to think, but people are married every year at Wawa's. Uh, <laughs> they meet there for coffee, they, and they, they actually have weddings. Uh, kids get Wawa tattoos, that's a thing. Uh, if you can imagine that, and clearly this gentleman was very happy to see Wawa come into his neighborhood. So, uh, the comprehensive plan we've talked about calls for neighborhood retail, um, and I, I think for fairly obvious reasons, you have very dense concentration of commercial on 36, and to alleviate that and offer convenience and service, these uh, retail nodes are, are uh, called for. Um, I think we meet the uh, intent of that very, very well when you consider the food offering and, and what Wawa offers is in its market or, or convenience store, if you will. The site plan um, is this, and there, there is a, just a very subtle correction, uh, Ian, that we had a, a different site plan that we submitted. There was, we had um, stormwater shown against that Eastern property line, which we did remove that when we realized that that was not allowed in that space. Um, and so the, the landscaping is still there. This plan doesn't show the landscaping. That hasn't changed, but we did remove that stormwater. I wanted to make that clear. Um, let's talk a little bit about the parcel configuration. We're, we're in no way trying to be cute or sneak anything by anyone, it, it, nothing like that. Uh, we're trying to take a property that uh, meets the comprehensive plan and, and try to align it with our use. Wawa is a 24 operation store and they all are, um, it's part of their brand and they, 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 they need to be. Um, because we're the first domino to fall in an area that's all um, zoned that way, um, we're trying to align our site plan to work inside. This plan does work. It, it doesn't call for any variances. It meets setbacks. It meets all the required, um, you know, the requirements of the ordinance. As a matter of fact, the parcel to the east, it was suggested to us that we buy that and use that as a buffer. And the letter that you got, um, basically we're doing the exact same thing. We're creating a buffer between the existing residential use as if we bought that property next door and, and what's there today. So I, I just, I don't want you to think that we're trying to slide anything by. We're not in any way. We've been very forthright about the approach and, and if it would work. So um, the traffic considerations, traffic's always a big issue. I think Ian covered it in his presentation, um, but it, 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 we're not creating a very heavy impact here. And we really do have a, an excellent site plan and getting the cross connections with the different parcels to disperse traffic into three different traffic points. Um, with the cross access to the south, we get to a full cut. It's a right in and right out on Dan Jones, but that actually will operate somewhat like a full cut because of the roundabout, right? So if someone wants to go left out of there, that's a fairly convenient movement to go right and then go around the roundabout. Um, and then, of course, the right in and the right out on uh, County Road 100. So we, the other thing that was missing from that previous site plan is that we are proposing two new turn lanes um, that will be in addition to the improvements that are being done on Dan Jones. Um, and that is it. Welcome to, happy to answer any questions you might have. Questions for the petitioner. Have you had conversations with the Avon School Corporation about the increased traffic and density? Uh, no. Were they given notice then to appear because they're within what, 600 feet of this development? I believe they were given notice, yes. I will add one thing, if I may. Um, Wawa and schools go together like hand in glove. Um, moms, kids, before soccer, before school, after school, grabbing, uh, grabbing something to eat, a soda. It's a very, very popular place. And we look uh, very much to be close to schools. Uh, as a matter of fact, there's a Wawa store. I have a picture of it, it's pretty remarkable a public school 
gave Wawa cross access. If you can imagine that, it's very hard to imagine, uh, but that's the level of trust and desire they had in the brand. Uh, that was in New Jersey, by the way. So all the Wawa locations, the hundreds that are out there, they're all 24 hours. Everyone. Is this a standard size location or is this a scaled down size because it's a neighborhood location? It's not your bigger. I mean, if this thing was on 36, would it be the same size? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, this is not a scaled down you know, size at all. It's our, I mean, there are, there are different prototypes, of course, but the, the, the building size, the parking, uh, we have eight MPDs. It, it fits very nicely on the site. Uh, and, and Wawa's are a neighborhood store. We are not, you know, we, it's not that we won't locate near highways. We certainly can do well with that, but that's not what drives our business. Our business is driven by being in the neighborhood, regular repeat customers. That, that's, that's who they are. <clears throat> what, um, on lot one, which is currently undeveloped, what kind of um, development would you anticipate going in there? I mean, quite honestly, we would just leave it open to the market at this point. It, it's, a, it's just a additional parcel that, uh, you know, we don't have a tenant for at this, at this time. So whatever, anything that would, would meet the C2 requirements? Yeah. Are, do you historically have a, <clears throat> are there, are there businesses that you historical types of businesses that you historically have relationships with in these kinds of arrangements or is uh, it just whatever meets the zoning requirements? A little bit of both. So, I mean, there, there's certain users that want to be next to Wawa and that do very well. Um, but then that doesn't always meet. So let's let, let's say the store was on 36, for instance, that would probably attract a different, you know, a, a compliment than what it would here. This is much more of a neighborhood setting. That's not going to get, you know, a car wash loves Wawa. Wawa's don't do car washes. So a car wash always wants to be close to them because they benefit from, from that piece of it. But this isn't a, this isn't a location for a car wash. Uh, so, you know, it's that kind of thing. So can we put prohibitive uses on lot one then? Identify prohibitive uses? Seeing we don't know what's going to go there? Oh, is that a question for me or for? Yeah. Yeah, yeah we'd be open to talking about that. We didn't, quite honestly, it wasn't brought up and I hadn't considered it till the last petition. But if there was a, if there's a <laughs> uses that you guys are against, we just assume C2 is what it was conference and plan called for and that that's what made sense but so should we assume that with the the lot configuration that you're proposing would you end up having an agreement so that you'd have use to the drive um in perpetuity so if that lot one was sold and developed you'd still want to have access to that no question as a matter of fact the uh, um uh, if i if I go back, does that work or not? So the because of the interconnectivity, we believe that that drive aisle, that 70 feet that we've, that we've created the, the separation of the Wawa parcel with the drive aisle, it's going to benefit lot one and the shopping center to the south. And just as the drive aisle for lot one is going to benefit Wawa and the shopping center, so will the shopping center's drive aisle benefit lot one and Wawa. Um, it, it, the interconnectivity is good for everybody, good for the community. It's good for the customer, keeps traffic off the road. The future building to the south, is that the, in the lot in front of the storage? Yes. You know, okay, thank you. Yes. What if you put your, your fueling station on the back side of the building, just move flip flop the building and get the fueling stations off of Dan Jones Road, kind of put them in the back of the building. Uh, and then you come in off of 30 or off 100 North and use that frontage right down to the fueling station. 
not a preferable layout for several reasons. And, and one of them is security. You have um, really blind people out of their cars fueling versus on the front of the road where it's a much more open and, and safer feeling. Uh, plus, I think, uh, yeah, I'm not sure if you've seen or familiar with the Wawa canopies. They're very, very attractive. Uh, it's not, not your typical flat canopies. Any further questions for the petitioner? <clears throat> Okay, with that, we will, if you'd have a seat, okay. we'll go forward with uh, people who would like to speak on this agenda item. Again, a reminder that we have 10 minutes total, and we would ask each speaker to limit their comments to two minutes. First person on the, the list. The first one is Shalman. Okay. Hi. Speak um, your name and address, and you have two minutes. Okay. Uh, I'm Shalman Sigmund. Uh, I live at the property directly east of Lot 1. And I think uh, my main question was about that buffer uh, there by the road. Like, what type of buffer are we looking at? Because I think uh, my concern would just be uh, the lights, the noise of the cars, uh, apparently throughout the night, if it's going to be uh, 24 hours. Uh, you know, are we looking at like little shrubbery that barely blocks anything to where we still have headlights coming into our house at night from people turning into the gas station? Uh, or are we talking full size trees, fence? Like what is, what exactly is going on there? And then uh, the only other point I had was just uh, wanted to know kind of what their anticipated start date would be for this project if it was approved. That's it. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> next person. The next person is John Gates. Uh, John Gates, 8109 East County Road. I will live three houses east of this. Um, the 100 North is a racetrack. We have, <clears throat> because it's the straight way to the hospital. It includes police, rescue, everybody. We can't even, we don't even have a sidewalk in front of our home. So they're talking about bringing people in that walk in. People don't want to walk across there because they don't feel safe across there, that area. And if you're going to widen that and bring more uh, lanes in there, how are people going to walk in there from those neighborhoods? And from the schools, that's a grade school and a middle school. There's very few kids that walk because I see it every day because I live there. So thank you. Okay. Next person. Next person is Stan Wright. <clears throat> okay. Brandon Wilson. Uh, good evening. I know I'm on the clock, so I'm going to be quick. Um, so uh, Brandon Wilson, 8093 East County Road, 100 North. Uh, for 20 years, we've owned the parcel um, next door to this proposed wall route project. Um, I did send a detailed email in to the staff. Um, hopefully you were able to get that and read it in time because I know, uh, I know the petitioner did not meet the requirements uh, that Ian stated in their letter that they were supposed to have those delivered by 311. Um, they were sent out on 314 and received on 319. So I did respond to your, uh, I did send that information on to you um, regarding our concerns on 321. Um, so real quick, the three topics, um, the five criterion that uh, Ian laid out, um, the criterion for residential property values, um, the conservation of residential uh, values, um, staff says minimal impact on property values on, on average, uh, properties next door to gas stations uh, lose 15 to 50 percent value in residential, um, uh, the residential value. 
Um, criterion five, um, uh, criterion five, responsible development and growth. Um, staff development of this lot would spark development, uh, according to your staff report, along 100 North. Uh, unfortunately, our property does not meet the town's requirements. Previous senior planner told petitioner uh, that we could reach out to our neighbor um, to see about selling. Uh, we did our due diligence and sat down with our neighbor, and they are not interested in selling their property. Uh, therefore, we do not have enough frontage along 10th Street to even develop commercially. So we lose value residentially, don't have an option to, to do anything with our lots commercially. Um, unless it's changed in the plan that we weren't able to see, um, the 30-foot setback um, requirement next to residential is not met. The drive heading out was only 10 feet unless that's been changed. Um, also, as far as future development along 10th Street, um, there is no access. You've reached two minutes, sir. Okay. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> Next. And you, you submitted the, the email that we have, correct? I, I'm not sure if you got it. If you have it in front of you, great. Hopefully you've had time to read it. It has pictures and, and okay. Right. Yeah. Okay, thank, thank you. you. Next person. John McDavid. <clears throat> Good evening. I think I misunderstood. Is this time only for remonstrators? Correct. Correct. Okay. That's not me. Okay, thank you. Is that it? That is all. Is there anybody else who would like to remonstrate against this project? I know I'm on a time constraint also. My name's Tony Harris. I'm at 8109 East County Road, 100 North. I live with John Gates. We're three houses down from this proposed development. Although I have no ill will toward Wawa, the company, and I have been to their gas stations, I have great concerns about having a gas station this close to this intersection. I work in my front porch during the day. I'm, I work, I'm a stay-at-home mom. I have a lot of time to observe traffic in this area. This area is extremely active traffic-wise and also pedestrian-wise, surprisingly. We have a lot of joggers, a lot of people from adjacent neighborhoods coming and using the sidewalks that are there. However, any kind of an attempt to cross that roundabout is playing roulette. Um, some of the most dangerous traffic in this area is due to emergency services running along 100 North trying to avoid US 36 because we all know that's fun. Um, and opposite corners include the church, two schools, and a good amount of res residential on that farther section east. Um, so honestly, there are two gas stations within a mile drive to this, prop to, uh, to this same location. Do we really need another gas station in this area? And do we need it there? Honestly, um, from what I've heard tonight, when I sat through all the other proposals, the family promise proposal would be much better fit in that area than where they're proposing. So maybe they could do a switch. <laughs> that's just a suggestion. So anyway, that's all I had to say tonight. Thank you for your time. Thank you. Hey, Catherine, even though that John's not a remonstrator, he would have a chance to speak. Yes. Is Yes. Th yeah, that would come. Yeah. So anybody... Go ahead, sir. My name is John McDavid, and actually I'm speaking on behalf of my clients who live at the 8603 uh, parcel that is the subject of this tonight. And real briefly. Um, just just a, a moment, a question about procedure. Do we need his address or the address of his client? I'll give you my address. Uh, I didn't because I don't live within the town limits, but it's uh, 726 Foxborough Drive, Avon. Thank you. Um, my clients lived in this property since the 60s. They, they wanted to stay there forever, but it's part of the town plan to develop commercially here. And they became aware of that. And in the last year and a half, they've been working uh, to, uh, they got approached by Wawa and I didn't know anything about Wawa when my clients came to me. I looked it up. I talked to people. People love Wawa. And what he said about the schools is right. As a parent, I, I'm taking kids at 6 in the morning. I'm picking them up at midnight <coughs> or later. 
when they have events, that's a good time to have the kids run in with the kids, get something to eat and take out. So I believe that. And I will, I will just say this, that I put out there, hey, who knows about Wawa? I got a lot of response back, all favorable. I didn't get anything negative back. And I think that because it fits the criteria, the five criteria, um, you know, my clients would certainly like to see it go forward. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Do we have anybody else signed up? That was the last one signed up. Nobody else? No one else. Okay. Is there anybody else present who'd like to speak on this agenda item? Could you please come to the podium, state your name and address. And you have two minutes. Great. I'm Stephanie Wilson, owner 8093 East County Road, 100 North as well. Um, being that this is a futuristic plan for that particular area, I do have concerns about access to the other properties. As previously stated, you know, commercial frontage is not there for some of those others, but if something were to come through, I'm just concerned about the one drive that Wawa has created with the other parcel and getting access even to other potential areas. So I, I want it to seem like we're completely I'm not completely against the Wawa. We visit them too, love them, but have very much concerns about it not meeting the criteria, especially from a residential as well as a commercial standpoint. So I just wanted to speak on that. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else present who would like to speak on this agenda item? Yes, sir. I'm going to come forward. Please state your name and address. Uh, David Derry, 925 North County Road, 800 East. I am one of the property owners involved. Um, I'm all for the project. Um, I know there's some questions about traffic and everything. All the housing residential that's went in north of, this, north of that intersection has brought all that traffic. Um, as they say, even in the traffic study, I don't foresee uh, the Wawa increasing traffic at all uh, it, it, I don't see that um, but I do believe it'd be good for the town especially they create quite a few jobs and they have quite a good uh, retention of their employees and everything so uh, and the uh, future plan for that whole area in there is commercial so commercial is coming regardless so okay. uh, thank you thank you is there anybody else present who'd like to speak on this agenda item? Yes, sir. Go ahead. <clears throat> Please state your name and address. Seth Alfiali, uh, 3841 State Road 75. Happened to be here for another hearing um, and just concerned citizen. Figured I'd stick around. I'm just curious, um, out of the thousand plus stores that Wawa has, how many of those uh, are in more uh, residential urban areas as or rural as opposed to urban or what we see here in Avon, right? A mix of both developing areas. Um, clearly the bodega in New Jersey isn't going to have the same gas station. It's or a gas station adjacent to the store, right? It, they're just the picture. I believe that was presented um, with the store opening appeared at least to simply be uh, a store of some kind that didn't appear to have a, a gas station adjacent to that. Um, secondly, uh, they talk about how the traffic study doesn't um, give implication that the, the traffic would increase as a result of this. But if their main, one of their arguments is that there's such a love and a draw to their company and their store, you're kind of contradicting yourself. If, if you truly believe that there's a draw to your brand, you're saying that and assuming that there's going to be a draw to this area. Uh, so you can't have both, I guess. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else who would like to speak to this agenda item? Okay. Would the petitioner like to use their five minutes for rebuttal? Yeah. 
Yeah, I just want to address some of the concerns and um, with regard to the the first uh, first person, the the buffer we'd, we'd work to make sure the buffer is good for the neighbors and uh, at, at the appropriate time, we, we would absolutely do that. Uh, if that screening might be a wall in some instances, if that's preferred, landscaping, whatever it may be. Um, I think, uh, you know, the concerns about traffic, I think are really done through the traffic study. I don't think there's any contradiction saying that we're uh, 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 in demand and a good operator and do a great job. And we serve the people that 75% of them are on the road today. It's a mature area with, you know, people around. We're not putting it out in the middle of nowhere and saying that people are going to come to us. We're saying that we're going to serve the community that's there and, and create an outlet for people to not have to go to 36. Um, we think the comprehensive land use plan is pretty smart that way. Um, and and that, that vision, I think, is, is we believe that we're helping fulfill that vision. Uh, so and the vast majority 95 percent are in this type of setting in a neighborhood setting the picture that i showed you was a unique store in philadelphia where wow was from where they did a downtown store but it brought that kind of crowd um, that's what i was trying to get across was the uh, the passion of the customers uh, showing up for something like that but what we're proposing here is 95 percent probably higher typical of what, what Wawa does. I mean, this, as I said, they are a neighborhood store. So, and, and that's, uh, that's the identity and they execute very, very well on it. So, yeah, uh, that's all. There was a question about um, the time frame for putting, putting, if this is approved for putting this in. Uh, yeah, thank you. Sorry. Uh, we, we, we'd proceed full steam ahead. So we'd have to go through the necessary approvals for permitting. Uh, but once we got our permits, we would um, we would we would break ground on the development. It would take about um, 15 months from the commencement of construction to do all of the um, horizontal and road work, as well as the the physical building. Uh, so it would be you know maybe an 18 month opening from now if you guys see it favorable. <laughs> so. Anything else? Any of any questions for the petitioner? Any further questions? Okay, thank you. Thank you. Discussion. <clears throat> so the uh, the one thing, the question that well first for Mr. Wilson, um, we did get your email, and I'll just say it's very well written, very detailed, so thank you for that. Um, and it was read, at least by me, so provide a lot of good information. The the one thing on when we talked about uh, the first gentleman, at, the first remonstrator about um, the buffer on the east side, and just like we talked about with Mission Foods, seems like there's some things that the petitioner could do to really control that because I know when during development we do look at light pollution and that's something that is um, that would be considered there and there's several ways to do that so I, I think that's a, a fair thing to ask about and light pollution does have to be controlled in that development so um, that would something the petitioner has indicated they would or be willing to address and as you heard earlier tonight there's lots of options around that um, but it also seems like they did create the lots to avoid to get around the 24 hour. Um, so they're not butting up against residential to allow them for that 24 hour operation, be it with full intention, they use that drive. So it seems like while it's not part of the lot, it is part of the business. And it, I looking for guidance on that. I mean, is that considered can that be considered as part of the business or is it a separate lot that they've entered into an agreement to use? In my interpretation of the ordinance, that's a separate lot. Um, the the language is very um, clear, I suppose, that it, if it abuts a residential use or district. Um, and a butt's got a pretty clear definition. In this case, um, 
doesn't abut that property. Um, the the gasoline service station use does not. Um, but we are in the um, in the rezoning phase, so you can address these things. Um, when we get in the planning phase and development plan review, we're looking at ministerial petitions where, you know, if it meets all the standards of the ordinance, we we are bound to approve it. Um, so, yeah, I think that the petitioner has been forthcoming, uh, giving us this plan, right? They didn't necessarily have to give us this fleshed out plan as part of this rezone. Um, so it's not as if they were hiding anything. Um, I'd say they're using it as a mechanism. Um, but yeah, it's, it's within your discretion discretion to impose any necessary commitments. Thank you. They, they are not asking for a waiver and they're abiding by the requirements of the ordinances. Um, that's, they've done what we've at, you know, they read the ordinances and have, a, and have adjusted their plans in order to meet the ordinances. You know, whether that's, you know, how you feel about that is one thing, but they've met the requirements of the ordinances in terms or yeah. conceptual. They yes. haven't asked yes, for true. the waiver yet. Yeah. Well, but they said all their stores are 24 hours. So what leads you to believe they're not going to ask for a waiver? I don't ha have any idea about that. But if they've met the requirements, I mean, we're not at that point now. Or right now, we're just looking, we're at the, right now, we're just talking about zoning. I look at this, I've, I've used Wawa. I mean, I've run into, in Florida and on the way there. And it, it's a great convenience store and it, it draws hundreds of people, thousands of people. And so the one gentleman's question was, and I agree with him, you know, are these stores that we saw up here, are they located in neighborhoods that where they want to put this? I don't know what the answer is. My suspicion is no. And if you can draw that many people in downtown Philadelphia for that thing, I, I, who knows what. But see, then I look at the traffic study. I get it. These schools that are there, and that's what I look at. You got two elementary, a middle school, elementary school. You did have another school that closed. You have a church that's there. And based on their history, they're going to create additional revenue or, I mean, volume of, of traffic. So... To me, it's location, 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 and I think it's the wrong location based on all those things. I think I, I disagree somewhat because I think it is, I mean, first of all, we had the petitioner who said that this is the type of environment that they go in. So I'm going to take the petitioner at his word when he says this is the type of environment and location that they look for. Um, I don't know that it's going to be the draw that I mean, I never heard of Wawa until probably just a few months ago, and somebody said something about going to Wawa, and I was like, what's Wawa? So this isn't Philadelphia. This isn't the East Coast. It may have a big draw. It may not. Um, I don't know that we're going to see thousands of people driving to Dan Jones and 100 North just to go to Wawa. I That would shock me if that's the case. I mean, it may be great. I've never been in one. I don't know. But that's not why we're here tonight is to ask about, do they meet the criteria to allow for the zoning change? <clears throat> ma'am, ma'am. Yeah. I would just invite the commission. Sometimes the narrative about what people said, uh, say, leads us in the wrong direction. So just remember, yeah, in your five criteria, it is whether the approval is responsible growth and development. Every development, every house that's ever been built increases traffic. That's not the test. It's not the test. Okay, it's what impact this, in this case, what impact this business would have on roads. You have a traffic study, but for someone to say that, you know, you should deny this because this will increase traffic, that is not, I mean, that's not the standard you know, of course it will. You know, how many cars? Do you have estimates in your study? I sometimes think when we hear things enough three or four times, then we start saying it. So I just want to make sure that when we talk about traffic, there's never been a development in this town that didn't increase traffic. There's never been a house built that didn't increase traffic. Your job is to look to see whether the existing roadways can handle the additional traffic generated by this site and whether there is 
whether there are adequate uh, commitments or conditions imposed to do so. Um, so while uh, people who speak in public comment can say whatever they'd like, I just want to make sure that you guys focus in on that, you know, not fall into that trap of saying, well, this will increase traffic and therefore we shouldn't have it. It's not the question. The question is, how will this impact existing roadways? What improvements could be made to accommodate that traffic? And if the uh, new traffic overwhelms your infrastructure, then you should say no. But those that analysis is very different than will there be more traffic? I've heard that about three times now, so I want to speak up and say, <laughs> be careful. Be careful how you analyze the issue, because of course it of course it will have more traffic. And this is why we have a town lawyer. <laughs> I think it might be good for us to just take a look at the criteria and just, just run down the first criteria, the comprehensive plan. Pay reasonable, we have to pay reasonable regard to the, to the comprehensive plan as adopted and amended from time to time. Their argument is the 2017 future land use cluster map designates this property as recommended for neighborhood retail which is what this would be in my, I mean, that's, that's what I agree with that. Uh, any thoughts on that? It's retail, but it's also a gas station. Yep. And I have concerns about it being open 24 hours in a neighborhood. So that's something that we should consider in determining whether or not the I do have a, can I have the petitioner come forward again? I do have a question. I'm sorry? Yeah, okay. So is a 24 hour business hours, is, is, is that non-negotiable? Yeah, that is that is absolutely non-negotiable. Wawa, all Wawa's are 24 hours. They operate around the country very, very safely. They have, um, very interesting approach to their business. Every um, every person in uniform gets free coffee, free drinks at a Wawa. So police, fire, you'll find them after hours, you'll find them in the parking lot doing paperwork, coming in and getting their coffee. Wawa mans every store um, on every shift with a minimum of three people. Um, it's an incredible deterrent to any kind of negative things that would happen in a, in, you know, the negative things that might be associated with the 24 hour operation when there's that many people at a store and they do their cleaning, they do their stocking of their shelves. Um, and they're also serving the community. I do want to reiterate, um, these stores are absolutely, I, I can't say it more enough and I'll bring picture after picture after picture. Um, this is the location that Wawa's are at. This is the location that Wawa's are at. They are in a neighborhood setting. Now, you know, they might be on a 36 in some instances or a busier road, but this is absolutely what we would consider a typical and a very desirable location for Wawa. Again, we're serving the large community around that's on the roads. Okay, thank you. If we go to criterion two, current conditions and the kit, we have to consider current conditions and the character of the current structures and uses in each district. And the petitioner says the character of this portion of East County Road 100 North has historically been compromised or comprised of single family residential uses, but the area to the south was recently developed with storage units, which you know. So then again, once again, we have this nexus between commercial and residential. We have a, a place, a, you know, a piece of property that is kind of a nexus between those two. Thoughts on Criterion 2? So I don't know if this goes with Criterion 2, but it makes me think our, when we look at the the conceptual plan here. There's road improvements on Avon Avenue that I believe were identified. Are there road improvements on 100 North that are identified or is it just a what right in, right out? Um, 
So I don't know whether they're identified on the concept plan, but there will be road improvements required along 100 North. Um, and then we have the Dan Jones widening. I don't know if it goes all the way up here. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm pretty sure it does, yes. Yeah. Okay. Regardless, they, they will be required to um, you know, get dedicated right turn lanes um, and everything else imposed by our, our public works director. All right, thank you. I have a quick question in relationship to the location. What is the difference in like lighting requirements? I, we, we know about the time, 24 seven versus was it five to 11? What are the difference uh, in requirements for lighting if you abut residential or if there's a commercial spot between you? Sure, you can't have a light trespass of more than 0 0.01 foot candles. Um, that's the standard of our ordinance. That's for if you're abutting residential? Correct, and yes. If you're abutting commercial? Uh, 0 0.03, I believe. Is, do you know like how much that is? I, not off the top of my head. I, <laughs> it's very, very minimal. All of the... All of the residentials to the east, is that correct? Correct, yes. Okay. Are we going to get the proper right of way then that we need for future improvements to 100 north? Yes. That's one of the conditions of. It did say. Uh, it's not in our staff report, but it is on our, uh, our presentation there. So if we go to the criterion three, the most desirable use for we have, we must consider and pay reasonable regard to whether this is the most desirable use for which the land in each zoning district is adopted. Uh, petitioner claims the most desirable use would be a small neighborhood scale retail use, such as small scale grocer, specialty restaurant, pharmacy, or boutique. And staff says this is the proposed, the proposed use is moderately in line with this most desirable use, which I think connects to piggy or piggybacks to what Jennifer was saying with regards to this being not just retail, but also a gas station. And C2 does allow for gas stations, correct? I would assume. Correct, yes. We go to criterion four, the conservation of property values throughout the jurisdiction. And um, the statement is that the proposed rezone would have minimal impact on the property values throughout the jurisdiction. Um, I noticed that the language here is very specifically says throughout the jurisdiction as opposed to the properties right next door. Because I think it's fair to say that the impact on the properties right next door would be different from properties a quarter mile down the road. Um, I think what we heard too is uh, from one of the remonstrators is that you know, open and willing to sell their property, but yet the adjacent property owner doesn't want to sell. So therefore they can't because they can't take advantage of it. Right. right. Because they don't have enough frontage to be able to have a, a retail business in there. So therefore they're one parcel wouldn't be able to be it, until the adjacent property owner didn't want to sell they couldn't do anything right so the the concern being that the residential <clears throat> value would go down right yeah, is that an impact caused by the uh, proposal or is that just something that results from other development around you well and that's this I'm, is, I'm not suggesting an answer. I'm asking a question. Those properties are all in C2, right, along 100 North, are they not? Or is that – I'm Ian looking to in on that there. one. Or is that, is that residential? They're all ag right now. The, uh, ag, okay. the future land use map uh, designates them as recommended for a <laughs> uh, neighborhood retail, but currently they're all ag. Thank you. So, you know, if we're, if we're talking 20 years from now, that, that could be different. But Or even 10. Yeah. And then we go to criterion five that we must pay reasonable regard to whether or not this is responsible development and growth. Comments on this say that this would develop a single family lot located at a primary and secondary street into a medium intensity gasoline service station and convenience store. Staff anticipates that development in this lot would spark further redevelopment 
the single family homes along this section of 100 South, which, which has, you know, been brought up obviously between some of the homeowners and Wawa um, and is consistent with the land use designation found within our future land use cluster maps. Traffic study was conducted as part of the rezone petition and indicates that new trips associated with the proposed developments are anticipated to have minimal impact on the adjacent road network. Um, again, I don't know that Wawa is going to become a destination point. It might for some people. I suspect it'll be just like BP or Shell or any other gas station where people are driving by and go, oh, I need to put gas in, and they'll pull in and put gas in and then maybe get a smoothie. Um, you know, that's the nature of <clears throat> even your most prestigious gas stations is that heads up, that's how they tend to be used. Um, so these are the five criteria that we need to consider before determining whether or not we want to grant this rezone. Um, I am concerned about if we grant the rezone, then they can, then the petition is for de develop, development plan is brought to us, and I feel like there would be have to be a lot of negotiation in order to, with regards to it being a twenty four seven. We're just recommending to the council. So this is true. This is true. It's not our decision. It's just a recommendation. Um, I don't personally object to the idea of, a, of, of what appears to be a company with a good reputation putting in a, um, a retail and a gas station on that corner. I think there are challenges. Jennifer Mason. Or Dave, rather, sorry. <laughs> We're getting late. <laughs> yeah, he's not here. He's not here, is he? Bill? That 24 7 uh, honestly kind of concerns me. I mean, it's, uh, you know, it could be a little bit of a uh, hardship for the people living, that, living in that area. I mean, with, even with a buffer, knowing that that's going on in some cases, just, uh, you know, not many feet from that property kind of concerning. I guess depending on what the buffer is. Well, yeah, and that's when I—that's that's what I was referring to with regards to there had to be some serious negotiations. Maybe they can do those thirty-foot trees. <laughs> the the you know. harbor vitees. Yeah, the harbor vitees. Uh. Greg, Paul. Spoke already. I think the, the buffer is something that needs to be addressed if if this would be approved. And we have the opportunity now to put a condition on that, to request a condition and forward that condition to, as part of a recommendation if that's what we want to do. I'm concerned about the 24-hour the operation in that area. It just, it, it does not seem to be the right location for 24-hour operation. That's why I asked all the residential is, is due east. Yes. That's why I asked that question to see what would the impact both lighting and traffic wise be. Um, I mean, Southwest you've got the, is a senior living home at South of Kingsway. Yeah. I don't know the name of it. And then we have on the uh, other side of Dan Jones, uh, the Northwest corner, there's some past the school, but really the only immediately, uh, immediate ones in the vicinity would be to the east. There's also, east. yeah. Any more discussion? Keeping in mind that this is a recommendation to the town council only, it's ultimately not our decision. This is just a recommendation. <clears throat> If there's no more discussion, I'll entertain a motion. Don't everybody jump at once. <laughs> if 
this is something we want to give some more thought to with regards to um, potential commitments or restrictions. We got a question from Mr. Taylor. Is it possible for us to come back with a recommendation this evening? Is it possible for you to come back with a recommendation? No recommendation. Yeah, you, you can, you have three options. You can send it with a favorable recommendation, an unfavorable or no recommendation. So a uh, neutral position, you can send that on to the council and let them, let them decide. You may do that, yes. So before you make a motion, the uh, I don't want to take the easy way out. If we're not in favor of this, then we ought to afford an unfavorable recommendation. So I mean that's to do our our responsibility here. Um, so I, I don't want to. What I'm hearing is we aren't in favor of this primarily as opposed to not making a recommendation. I, I would, I, that's the position I would take is that I would be in favor of this understanding and hoping that the petitioner would understanding that they're probably going to have to enter into some serious negotiations if they get to the um, proposal, development proposal stage. That would be the position I would take is that I would, I would I would vote for the recommendation. You can put a condition on whatever the recommendation is, can't you? Additional condition. Do you have a condition in mind? Not being open twenty four hours. What's the um, procedure for that? Dan, in terms of, do we have to approve the condition first and then? No, it's not a waiver. So it's not two different motions. It's just if uh, if you had a motion to send a federal recommendation to the town council subject to a condition that the um, store be operated consistent with your, uh, as if it were adjacent, directly adjacent, <coughs> Or, or, or some other time period, but you have a, you kind of have the default position in your, in your ordinance uh, about hours, but you could attach any condition. And the town council could choose to agree or ignore our recommendation uh, they as do that? to the condition as, and as to the recommendation. Yes, they can do whatever they want. <laughs> I do. Um, I do think that uh, both, uh, I think you make a good point that generally, in my experience, uh, no recommendation is usually something that's forwarded when you are unable to reach a majority vote on either favorable or unfavorable. Now, I'm not saying that's the only way you can do it. I'm just saying that in my experience, the town council does rely upon the plan commission to do the heavy lifting, to look hard at these issues. I think that I think the town council has, I think all um, legislative bodies in all levels of government look to the plan commission to make recommendations. I think that they would prefer that you make recommendations, um, but but they, I think in Navon, I, in 20 years, I remember one time when there was no recommendation and it was because they entertained motions for favorable and unfavorable, unable to get a majority as to either leaving no recommendation as the only vote that a majority would support. And so I do think that your comments about let's do our job and do what we can do were, are well taken. I think the council would rather know how you feel than not know how you feel. I think they, they don't want you to pass it on it with no recommendation unless you have no choice. And again, this is a close, you, you've talked about the five criteria these five factors break both ways, right? You've got some going one way, some going, it's a hard thing, but I think, yeah, somebody needs to make a motion. You can vote on if you get a majority, it goes on. 
If it doesn't, then you may end up having to have a motion for no recommendation and let the town council decide. And you guys know Greg, so you may decide that's what the, the council gets what it needs. So we need to go through we we may need to go through a series of motions here to see where we are. Right. I the only way to move to start doing that. The only way to move forward is somebody to make a motion to see where it lands. Yeah. I would like somebody to make a motion one way or the other, with or without okay. conditions. I'm just trying. The thing I'm trying to think about is conditions. My biggest concern is the buffer, <laughs> and if 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 they are if they do put there, what are they doing to be considered? But that's not tonight. That's not what we need to consider. That would be it, something. It is. We can add conditions. It absolutely There's is. There's a condition. We we could add a condition. Well, yeah. As as we discussed in training, again, I would invite you not to fall into that trap of saying, "Well, we'll you know, we'll deal with that at development plan." You don't have any discretion at the development plan. So if there, I, I agree with David. I mean, I think that I've told you over and over in training, if there are things that concern you, a rezone is when you can deal with them. Um, so what kind of condition are you thinking with regards to the, Dave? I, I, I don't know, something that just says that they're going to work with the residents to, to make sure that it's satisfactory, but I don't, I'm not sure how you would word that. Um, so, I, so I'm not quite sure the best way to, to word that, but that's what, in my mind, that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, but I'm not sure how you should word that. I mean, we... That's what I'm worried about. I think like with Mission Foods, we got an idea of a significant barrier mm -hmm. um, with the 30-foot trees, what, giant trees, I can't remember what, what they're is the What is the buffer minimum that we have to have, Ian? It's candlelight, so sometimes. It's a 30 foot buffer. Um, but we also have with, that. With eight foot tall plantings um, spaced every 30 feet, and I believe six shrubs every 30 feet in addition to that. But there are options as well. You can do a solid opaque fence. Um, the, the ordinance does allow us several, several options. But we also have that, that strip that was creating this second, I get lost lot two, I guess it was. Is yeah. that correct? Lot one, the undeveloped plot. Yeah. It is, it's facing Dan Jones, is that right? Yes. Right, so it is kind of facing away from the. Yeah, the back of the, 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 of back, the back of the building is gonna face. The all the lights side. are facing, like from the gas, from the gas pumps and stuff would be on facing Dan Jones. So I'm not, I, I could read that and see what people vote for. Uh, without any conditions and we can go from there if we want to you said you wanted to do a series of i i mean we just we need i think we need to to take to, to take the temperature that is, of the board let's just see where we are now and then see if we've got we need four for majority correct yes yes so let's see if we've got four to vote one way or the other on something um i move that we forward a favorable recommendation to the town council for a ZA 2404 Wawa, a zoning map amendment to rezone 3.45 acres from AG to C2. Since it has satisfied all the requirements for a zoning map amendment under state law, subject to the commitments outlined within the staff report on file. Period. We have a second. We don't have a second. We can't go forward with a motion. Okay. Somebody want to make another motion? I move that we forward an unfavorable recommendation to the town council for Z24-04 Wawa, a zoning map amendment to rezone 3.45 acres from AG to C2. Since it has not satisfied all the requirements for a zoning map amendment under state law, subject to the commitments outlined within the staff report on file. Do we have a second? Not having a second, the motion fails. So now we need to talk about commitments. We've got two issues here. Dave raises the issue of the buffer. Greg raises the issue and Jennifer raises the issue of the whole of the 24 seven operating hours. We've heard from the petitioner that that would be, that would kill the deal completely. So if, so we, if we're talking about development and that kind of stuff, that would need to be something to be considered. I'm assuming that the 24 hour seven the 24-7 is also because of the lighting. 
is that also a consideration for the thing that concerns you? Well, that and it's a neighborhood service station, convenience store. People, it's a neighborhood. That's why you're coming here. But yet, the neighborhood isn't up 24/7. Although it is, it is, in, it is within an area that is being considered for commercial <laughs> development. Oh, here, let me. I look this up. Okay. And granted, it's it's Google, and anybody can put anything on Google. <laughs> And I said, most of the branch, it says here, most of the branches of Wawa remain open 24 hours a day. Other locations serve from 6 a.m. to 11 p.m. Almost exactly to what our UDO calls for. Other locations, doesn't tell me how many, but there are other ones. It's not unanimous. They got to be open 24 7. So, again, this is just Google. I'll make a motion. Okay. I move that we forward a favorable recommendation of the town council for ZA 2404 Wawa zoning map amendment to rezone 3.45 acres from AG to C2. Since it has satisfied all requirements for a zoning map amendment under state law, subject to the commitments outlined within the staff report on file with the additional commitments that operating hours be restricted to 5 a.m. to 11 p.m. and that a Buffer zone consisting of 30 foot uh, evergreen trees, uh, arborvaceous trees uh, be planted on the eastern boundary of lot two and lot one. Can you add a fence to that as well? I, I prefer a natural barrier as opposed to a fence. Do I hear a second? Having no second, the motion fails. I'd like to get some feedback as to why there is no second on that. I have a question. Um, if we would pass that and then the town council would pass it and Wawa backs out, then that carries on to anybody who wants to develop the land. I have some concerns about that just based on we don't know who else will. So the conditions would, would so the, the buffer conditions and the operating conditions would carry with the land, carry forward if Wawa were to back out. So it's, it, I, again, I would like some feedback as to why there was no second on that motion. I'm with Catherine. What do we Including need to see? That to the prohibitive uses of lot one that they don't know what's going to go there. I mean, you're rezoning that piece as well, but we have no clue what's going there. Mm -hmm. So do we want to prohibit what's going to go there? Are you, you suggesting that this might be a good opportunity to do what we did earlier in the evening? In order, in other words, to take a look at, we don't have the tier one criteria on this, but to take a look at if there are any any uh, businesses that are allowed under C2, but that we would not want to go on that lot one, which is what we did earlier tonight. So we had talking about asking the petitioner to work with staff to come up with recommended uses for lot one. <clears throat> mm -hmm. Yes. So this would be a motion to continue, but this is something where seek the input from the petitioner of the willingness to work with staff on that, as opposed to we're looking at, we're not sure what we're looking at because uh, neither motion is gone forward here but we're looking at some <coughs> working with staff here to get some more options so you petitioner i'd ask and come forward to your thoughts on working with staff here to come up with a more definitive plan for lot one yes absolutely and are you can you speak to greg's 
Google search <laughs> that's, that indicates that there are actually Wawa's that do not operate 24-7. I, I, I can't speak to it because I'm not aware of it. Wawa's, this, this deal will not, this deal's dead if it's not 24. I've been developing for Wawa for 15 years. I've done 30 stores for them across Florida. I don't know of a single store that isn't 24-hour operation. So perhaps there's a location from 30 years ago or something. I don't know. But there's, Wawa's are 24-7. New store, it's 24 seven. So I'm so. willing to make a motion. And I, I, may I add one more thing just to address, um, we, we have a signed lease with Wawa. So. Um, I'm the, sorry, say that again. We, we have a signed lease with Wawa. Our lease is subject to these approvals, but it's a signed lease. So I just wanted to be clear that this isn't a Wawa thinking about it or something if, if we deliver. They've committed to building on here. They have. You're not. That's right. I just want to make sure that. that okay, so you already have the lease. Correct. Yeah, and I just wanted to make clear that the Wawa has committed to this site. So to be clear, like the continuance, what what I'm looking for is that you'd be working with staff, like we said, to look at like uses for lot one. But I'd also recommend trying to work with the residences, uh, the the landowners, um, like you did before and seeing if there might be a, a solution for their concerns too. Absolutely, we do it all the time. And we, we, I know you have, but yep. just yep. to continue no, that we, discussion. We, we can offer some good ideas that are that I think can, you know, maybe maybe close the gap here on the buffer that is. I'll be glad to make a motion. Go ahead. I move that we continue ZA 2404 Wawa to the will 30 days be adequate? I, can, can I make a real, real quick comment just just um, before you make the motion? I okay. Just, so you're saying that they're not 24 hours. There was an article in 2022 saying that <clears throat> Wawa was discontinuing 24 hours at some of their Philadelphia stores. And I look in the Wawa site and in the center of Philadelphia, it's not 24 hours, six to 11. So it was okay. pretty easy to find stores that are not open 24 hours. I, I can't say it enough times, guys. I'll have to get a letter from Wawa. I, don't, I, I know you're questioning what the validity of what I'm saying, but I'm telling you that this I has to I don't think anybody's questioning no, no. your integrity or anything, no, but no, I think- I, I think what you're saying here is, is what you think is so correct. So I, I think what you're looking at, Wawa opened some stores in downtown Philadelphia, and there were some crime issues with some of those stores. Perhaps that's what that is. I can't speak specific, but I know that that there were some issues in some downtown stores um, at one time, so, but the, the, this store needs to be. This this might to your client and have this conversation with them and just, you could share with them the conversation you heard us have. And if you come back in a month and, and it's a deal breaker, then we'll have to take that into consideration. Yeah, but I, that would be, I, I think I like Paul's suggestion that we continue this. I, my question is 30 days enough or would you want to have 60 days? No, we'd be happy to meet okay. with staff um, as, as soon as April meeting. they're available. We'd be happy to sit down and go through those. Okay. Um, then I will finish my motion here. So I again, restate that I move that we continue ZA 2404 Wawa to the April 22nd uh, plan commission meeting. Okay, motion in a second. Let's take a vote. Catherine Ransberg. Four. Paul Guckenberger. Four. Bill Reed. Four. Jennifer Spencer. Four. Greg Susan. Four. Dave Kaufman. Four. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, do we have any other business? None for me. Committee reports. Uh, BZA approved a variance of use for a uh, light vehicle uh, automobile services. Hang on just a second. If we could ask you all to take your conversations outside of the committee room, that'd be great. Thank you. Okay, go ahead. Board of Zoning Appeals approved a, uh... approved a, a use variance to allow uh, automobile services light 
um, in the tier one. Uh, that's at Scott's finishing touch to allow for a, a take five oil change to go there. Okay, Bill. Any other committee reports? Nope. All right. If there is nothing else for the good of the order, I declare this meeting adjourned. <laughs>